Hey guys, just wanted to give you a quick update on one of the coolest new social media apps. It's called BJJ Link. Think of it as something like a combination of Facebook, Reddit, and uh, maybe Tinder. I'll put into one app strictly for BJJ people. So um, first thing you got to do you got to go to your web browser and go to bjjlink.com and sign up for the account. It's super easy, super fast, takes like five seconds. Then you're going to download the app, BJJ Link, from the App Store. And then you're going to log in and you're going to start building your profile. And so you guys can see here, I chose my profile picture. And of course, shirtless and jacking some kettlebells, you know, the American flag behind me, put in black and white. So, you know trying to look as uh, cliche as possible. And then you can scroll down a little bit. You fill in your details, name, country, date of birth, uh, the academy that you train at. You're going to put in the date that you started training, and then it's going to uh, ask you for your rank. So obviously I'm a black belt. Um, I put in my date, and it put me at uh, second degree. I don't think I did that myself. I think it actually gave me the second degree on its own after I put in the date. Um if you scroll down, look, you can see the lineage and my Jitser links. These are all the people I've linked up with in the, the past few days. Got a little section for the history. You can see uh, I joined Autos HQ in uh, August 2014. Uh, Nogi World Champion 2018. And uh, yeah, then you can get down. You, know, you keep scrolling and it turns into a news feed. So look, I'm going to go over here to the sidebar, show you guys what's on the sidebar. Um, if, if my phone acts a little funky, it's, uh, it's not the app. It's my phone. I dropped it in water and I got some water damage. So the screen is a little funky, but look, we got a message section. I don't have any messages cause no one likes me. Notifications. Oh shoot. I got some notifications and then, uh, see, I'm gonna go back. Whoops. Sorry. Fat thumbs. And, oh, there's the map. That's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, this map is fucking cool, okay? You can basically just go around the world, and all these are academies, okay? These are academies that are currently um, affiliated with BJJ Link, or there's a, someone from these academies who has a BJJ Link account. And uh, basically, you can just kind of scroll the world at your fingertips, and you can see where all the academies are. Naturally, you see a lot of academies in Southern California, and over in the New York area, um, you can scroll in, get a little bit closer. You can see there's like 50 academies, 55 academies in Peru. There's a few in Ecuador. Venezuela has two. Um, so basically, wherever you're traveling the world, you can just kind of scroll around on this map. You can find academies in the area that you're in. If you zoom in all the way up, this is going to be difficult for me because my phone's so funky. Um, but if you say we go all the way into Barcelona, all the way up in there, all oh, there's still three academies. There you go. They get broken up. Once you get close enough, they they academies get broken up, and you can click on the academy and you can see what team it is. Um. So if you're ever traveling the world, you guys can check out this map, scroll around wherever you are, and see uh, where there's academies. And if you have a, a link with anyone that goes to that academy, then you can message that person. Ask them if you can come train with them, and boom, you're going to have training wherever you are in the world, which I think is super cool. And, uh, you know, there's other sections uh, over on the side. I think that was the Explorer section. There's an Academy section where you can put in Academy information. There's an Event section. Check this out. Uh, there it is right there. Um, Roberto Jimenez Seminar coming up in uh, Ridgefield Park, New Jersey on Wednesday, January 8th. So here, shout out to... Roberto Jimenez just got his black belt. And um, yeah, so there's a journal section. Uh, I think that part of my that, that part of my screen is dead. I can't click on it because my that's the dead zone on my screen, so it kind of sucks. But um, yeah, you can you can journal, uh, take notes. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, guys. You're probably going to use this app to creep on some girls. And, uh, you know, I'm not judging you for it, but uh, that's kind of what happens with social media apps and jujitsu. So this is just another tool for you to uh, find your future jujitsu lover. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank them for, for uh, sponsoring the podcast. And uh, I hope you guys check it out. Remember, you can uh, go to the web browser, 
to sign up for the account, um, bjjlink.com. And then you download the app from the app store and then sign in onto the app. And then you can build your profile and post all your shirtless pictures and your, your butt shots. And, uh, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about all those, uh, what do they call them? Thirst traps when you're trying to get some attention. I'm not judging guys. I'm not judging. I've, I've done it too. We've all done it. I'm not judging, but I think you guys should all check out this app and, uh, Sign up and uh, try it out. See if you like it, you know. Support the uh, jiu-jitsu entrepreneurs out there because I think this is a cool one. And, uh, yeah, big shout-out to BJJ Link. Thanks for uh, sponsoring the podcast. Hey guys, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the Mapper and Podcast, episode 28, with our esteemed guests. Esteemed guests. Lachlan, which I mispronounced when I first met. He uh, said La- Lachlan. But that's only because I've heard so many other people pronounce it wrong around me that yeah. I, I fucked it up. You're I still bet. a lot closer than Lachlan. Yeah. Giles, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it Giles or Giles? It's Giles. Giles. Yeah. Giles. Lach- Lachlan Giles. Yeah. And so now we've announced it. Now people will get it right, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, I should have got them to write it on the Starbucks cup. I should have said, <laughs> get them to have a try again because usually I say Lachlan and they just look at me and I'm like, well, because we'll Giles. Go with Liv. We'll go with Livia. That's just, like just a go with that. that's a running joke though. Like the Starbucks baristas or what they're called, they'll intentionally write people's names wrong. Yeah, because they, it's like they don't give a fuck and it's just funny yeah. it's, it's to them to just write it as wrong as possible for attention on Instagram because people will just post it like, what was this? You Those are the same name. people that make fake accounts online to just troll people. Just Which is, seems to be all of the internet these days. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. go on any Instagram post, it's all basically fake accounts. Sure. But um, we have Lachlan here because he came out and did a seminar at the gym. Yep. And yeah. It was an amazing turnout. It sold out in like two days, basically. Yeah, it was crazy. How has this experience been for you from like... You're riding the big wave. It's a massive yeah. wave you're on oh, right it's, now. It's crazy because it's, uh, it's gone... I mean, I, I sort of um, went, went from a level where I was sort of known from mostly from having like a YouTube channel... Um, and a, as a competitor, but not like as a uh, extremely right. No, no, like major accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and then, well, I got I got a bronze at Nogi Worlds. That was like it's it's like okay. It's I was happy with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, to have like a a big performance in ADCC was uh, on the biggest stage. Was I think like if you're ever gonna have a day where everything comes together, that's that's that, the place that's to do the it. Day. That, was the, that was the day. Yeah. That was the time and the place. So I yeah. I know that our our listeners are like a lot of times jujitsu nerds and can you explain like what exactly was the technical difference about your heel hook compared to like the other leg lock trends that were happening at the same time and you kind of went and did something that looked different yeah and the setup was different and the execution was different and yeah super effective yeah i definitely don't claim to have like invented it as in like people were already playing 50 50 of and course people were, were heel hooking from 50 50 and people were using k guard entries as well so like there's it's certainly i've got my own little spin on how I, how I do things. But yeah, I suppose the um, majority of people were playing like uh, the saddle as, as the main mm-hmm. heel hooking position or potentially outside Ashy. Um, whereas I, I started to focus more on, on the 50-50. Um, and just, I, I just found when I was getting there, people found it a little harder to escape. So I had a bit more time to work. Um, and then as I kept working the 50-50 position at four, four heel hooks, I got more success from there. Um, so then I started looking at um, how do I enter the 50-50 like directly because mm-hmm. I was kind of playing more shin to shin, single leg X, you know, which which leads better to like outside Ashy and potentially the that reverse X to the saddle. But to get to 50-50, it's kind of a bit convoluted. So I started watching the Meow Brothers because I, f- I figured they're probably the best in the world at, at getting to leg entanglements. Mm-hmm. Um, they just don't play the heel hook game too, too often. Um but so I started watching them and I saw they were using K guard and I sort of followed through with that and, and worked that a lot. And K guard for those that don't know, is that underhook legged position where you kind of cross the knee on the inside of their thigh with the foot hooked in front of the thigh? Is yeah, that what that is? I suppose. So. I don't know. It's got a, a lot of different names. Yeah. Um, what is it? 
it's like kind of like the Matrix guy. If anyone's been, oh okay, that. oh like so it's throwing the leg around. Yeah. From there. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I, ca- I kind of call the some people call it like the knee bar sweep as well, where you kind of essentially your foot's on the outside. It's, it's like when they stand up and you close guard, your foot's on the outside and you drop your knee inside, and you could go for a. Cat, I go for a leg entanglement, but yeah, I okay. call that K guard. Now, I see, but, I see. Um, it's a similar position to what I call squid guard in the gi. It's like okay, the same yeah, position. Yeah. It, there's a ton yeah. of torque you can get there on someone's body. Yeah. It's really effective. I agree. I literally didn't even know that was, was called K guard. I didn't know either until uh, I heard you saying it. Today. I've heard of K guard, and I know yeah. the guard that we're talking about from squid guard, but I had no idea they were the same. I th- I don't actually know, but I think it's I or think similar. your body sort of makes a K. I can but see uh, it. Yeah, like you I can like, see it. Yeah, it's the yeah. one leg and the other leg. The other leg's like this, and the one other leg is yeah. straight. Yeah, I can see it. I, I don't know if that's. I have no idea. I don't even know who called it K guard. Someone, someone. I was playing, and someone's like, "Oh, you're doing K guard." I'm like, "Okay, let's call it that." <laughs> I thought. I thought Craig. I thought that was Craig's thing. Maybe that's was Z guard. He's got Z guard. Oh, Z guard. Yeah, yeah I know it's a. Stu- I know it's a stupid <laughs> letter. Um. So this this segues into my most important question of all: is who's the best Aussie leg locker? Definitely Craig. I don't think so. Not anymore, dude. Not from a <laughs> from, not from a whose leg lock bigger yeah, names. I don't. I don't know about that. Nah. Um, oh, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, and you guys train. Craig's like, amazing. Like he's, you've been his prof- like professor. Yeah, like character. I mean, I, like yeah. what are you to Craig? I, I don't. Know, I don't relationship really like wise. He told I, us I, you promote him. Yeah, I promote him. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he's. Uh, I kind of consider him more a training partner. You know, like I, I don't sit there and go like, "Oh, Craig, like." You know, Craig mops the mats. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I can't I learn a lot from from Craig and hopefully he learns something from me as well. Um, but yeah, he's. This is he's a very, very humble way. It's a very humble way of saying that you're the boss. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, 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 I think just that kind of goes into the I'm whole kidding. thing, though. It's like it's it's a lot more comfortable for everyone. I think if you get away from the whole professor yeah, for sure. the pupil higher, thing and make it more down. about like. Tra- either it's a sport and your athletes in the sport and maybe someone takes on the coaching role yep. or the athletes, but not, not necessarily is professor or like some hierarchical thing. It's just coach. And yeah. I mean, that probably the only area like, you know, like I, I'm, I'm running the classes. At St. Right. So like I'll set the, the, whatever we're working on for the day or whatever. Although my, the way I structure them is very, the ones that Craig will be in, which is our pro sessions are very, um, kind of open to whatever the person wants to be working, they've kind of got yeah. the time to work that. So it's, I mean, it's, there's very little, Im- I, I don't sit there and go like, Craig, you must do this. You know, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think that would be worse for him because he's a pretty smart guy and he knows what he needs to work more so than, than I will. You know, so, yeah. But right. if you guys got into a leg battle, who would win? We call those like <laughs> shootouts. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Shootout. Are we in 50 50 or the saddle? That might be the, oh, that's, that's, that's yeah, the deciding yeah. factor. That. We'll go with that. He's more 50 50, huh? I'm 50. You're 50. 50. Yeah, he's saddle. Yeah. Okay. Me and Craig, when we were training at Henzo's, had the just most retarded roles ever, dude. <laughs> like, I was expecting to go and train with Craig and have like technical battles between me and him. And we both just like stunted each other's ability to do jujitsu. And we just resulted in the most ridiculous matchups I've ever experienced <laughs> in my life in the training room. Like, he would tap me consistently. From bottom mount with a front naked choke while he's, oh, no. and then oh, and then no. I would I would only tap him with like a diesel squeezel, but not like the one where it's on the neck because he would defend it, and I'd just get him with like a jaw lock, and I was like, those are the exchanges of submissions we had in training. There was no guard passes, and no like actual jujitsu happening. It was very bizarre, I mean, and we I eventually bet. just stopped training with each other because we were like, this is pointless. <laughs> like for some reason, our games just don't match up to like a fluid role. I bet you he would smile at you too when he does his his. Uh Ezekiel from Undermount. He's, I think, I think Craig like he explained it to us. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It, it, I mean, he's he's actually can can do some some of those sort of things well. Like, but yeah, it's it's kind of the same with. I'll be rolling Craig, and he'll be like grabbing my arm and putting it behind my back, and then like you're kind of rolling with your arm behind your back, which is a legit technique. But right. He's kind of you know he's doing it just to stir you up. Does he rub just it on? So, does he rub so your? Just so you're kind of like, oh. Does he like bring his hand, the hand really close to his balls too? Like, <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I, I do that to people. Then I whisper in their ear like, hey, don't touch my balls. <laughs> Make a fist. You're the one who's always complaining about people grabbing your junk in training. That's because they do. You do. Sounds like you're making them it's do you it. and Lucas. You just no, I'm just saying to <laughs> sometimes when I'm on someone's back and I get that hand behind their back, I tuck it into my thigh and I just whisper in their ear, make a fist and don't tap with that hand. <laughs> 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 tap with the other hand. Wow. Yeah. Good thing you haven't taken my back. 
time recently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so I have some questions because I just opened yeah. my gym here and I've been kind of experimenting with uh, different class structures and how to actually like impart what I know to the students in like an effective manner. And I feel like you do a really good job of explaining concepts as well as the like technical execution of a movement and your teaching style. And um, how do you incorporate that into like a class structure yeah. for like a, a large amount of students, maybe with different learning capabilities from like people who are not super talented to people who are like can pick up something like that. Yeah. What would be like a, a, a I, general class structure for you? Yeah, I mean, I th- we we split the. I think the. I think it's really important to split the levels, and so so that you know who your target audience is. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, so we have intro, then we have fundamentals, intermediate, and advanced, and then pro. And um, those are five separate types yeah. of classes, and yeah. you teach all of them in different. Yeah, format. yeah. I, I don't do the intro class. That, that's like basically the first eight lessons. We just have like, this I is see. a very broad overview of jujitsu. So then you can move on. So it's kind of like uh, you don't want someone. I guess it's more so that people, when they first start, they don't, they, they kind of know what the big picture is, you know. Because sometimes you come in and you're like, "Oh, we're learning butterfly guard today," and they're like, "Why am I here? Like, what what's a guard? What's yeah. you know?" So at least right. they kind of have that uh, that part down. Um, but uh, yeah, so we have that. We're actually thinking of adding another <laughs> another layer in between that as I well. I mean, you can't have too many, honestly. You, yeah. If you really break it down to what the like, foundationally what people need to learn. Yeah. What is it even? I think that the hard thing, because it's, you've just opened, I mean, that said, you've probably got a, a pretty good student base by now, but um, f- like it has to, it had to grow for us to be able to mm-hmm. split. Like when we first start, if you've got five people in the gym, there's no point having a of course. intermediate and advanced <coughs> and a beginner's class that you just yeah, need to yeah. get them all together. Um, but once, as it grows, then separating seems. Which year did you open your academy? It's been like five years now, mm. right? At the end of 2014. Yeah, it'd be five years. Yeah. yeah. So it was actually Kit started it. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, Kit oh, Dale yeah. started it. And then he decided he didn't want to teach anymore. That was after su- about six months. He became months. a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> movie star, actually. Yeah. I had him on the I had him on the, the episode at Nogi Worlds for like 30 minutes. Oh, really? I haven't been able to talk to that guy in so long. Yeah, he he did his uh, American accent for me. Oh. It was really was interesting. Good? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, he did some good ones. Yeah, no, he did a good job. He He hid his accent very well. Uh, so, so do you have a curriculum for your different layers of instruction, or the, f- the five different segmented classes? Yeah, for for the intro one we do, and for the fundamentals we do. Um, intermediate, I we don't have a curriculum. I tend to just because I intermediate, well, intermediate and advanced, I will basically teach the same thing, but it's more just like uh, th- I'll kind of adjusted if it's if it's intermediate which kind of lets people of all that anyone can come to but mm-hmm. it's kind of assumed that you know something i'll, I'll right. show it a little bit more basically and then the same topic i'll teach a little more advanced in course, right right advanced i see what you're class. saying um yeah and then uh <laughs> for, well i'm just curious because like i've been tr- i've been trying to think of like should i write out a curriculum for us to follow and like on a week like as yeah. the weeks progress are we working through like close guard yeah. attacks and then are we working through like the defenses to those attacks and then we tr- what do we transition into there do we go into like arm bar series from close guard and then transition into arm bars or do you just sort of like assess the class see what people are failing at and then yeah. address those issues directly because I, I feel like that's pretty effective as well it's, it's good i i was doing that for, like when i first started it mm-hmm. was it was the that approach like oh what do i want to what, what should i teach today um i just found it was funny when when I kind of sat down and said, okay, well, like for for our fundamentals, which is I, I kind of consider white to blue belt. Like, what do I want someone? I wrote down what do I want a blue belt to know, mm-hmm. and I kind of wrote it all down and had a big list of things. And a, a lot of them I looked at, I was like, oh, blue belts should know that, but I haven't been teaching that much. Like, because you kind of come in and you teach whatever you think, but usually it'll. I found like sometimes you're like, oh, what am I going to show today? I'll show this, but it's always you always lean towards the more sexy sort of right because um, it's more fun to teach a lot of times exactly. as well yeah but then when you when you write it out and i'm like okay well you know this is the only time in the next you know because I, I tend to do it by week like i spend a week on a on a theme and then move on and i might look at it and be like, okay this is the only time for the next you know four months five months that they're going to work like how to take the back from turtle you know i was, I was like well, how to deal with turtle so like i, I make sure i teach it the, the most important things that for that particular topic. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So because, I, I I was, because yeah. I've written it out and I'm like, okay, they're not going to learn this topic again for a long time. 
uh, I better teach it right and and teach it well. Yeah, I, so I found that better once I once I you wrote do, it. You do you teach the same lesson for the whole week as well, largely yes. for the fundamentals. We then you know vary. Through. I think that's yeah. a good idea. I think it's good. In, I mean, ideally you would build on it, but the problem is like you get someone who wasn't here on Monday and they come on Wednesday yep. and, and you know, like so that's why I ch- tend to teach the same thing. And by I'm, Saturday I'm people sometimes get it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, especially in the fundamentals. If it's the fundamentals. Yeah. I mean, they they kind of need to do it more than once yeah. anyway. And then what I do do as well, because I think one thing I know has been shown to be important for learning is, uh, I call it spaced repetition, but like repeating, so like give it a bit of time, like the, you teach it and then teach it again mm. at a certain point. So I'll, uh, about every eight to 10 weeks, I'll do a, a, a revision week. So whatever they've learned in that kind of 10 week block, roughly, mm. we try to kind of go through all of that in, in a class. So they, they kind of, each position links. So it might be like, Escape side control, let, let's say for a fundamentals, escape side control, get to half guard, half guard sweep, um, you know, and then there would be a drill. Like these, this might be sec- separate weeks um, uh, within the, the si- you know, within the syllabus. Mm-hmm. So like um, might be one week on escaping side control, a week on you know, building frames from your half guard and getting back to a knee shield, and then a week on doing the underhook from half guard. And right, getting the sweep. right. But then... On that revision week, they kind of put that all together as a <coughs> as a bit of a flow drill, just to kind of re- refresh their brain of, of what they learned. And b- before I go into my next question, the reason I'm asking this is because you, I've always sort of seen you as more of a instructor rather than like a hardcore competitor. I know you've always been in the scene competing, but it seems like you more identify as an instructor first and then an athlete second. Maybe I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'd like. I think it's a better thing to be right actually. well <laughs> i, I kind of yeah. view myself in the same way like i like to compete well i don't really like to compete, <laughs> compete per se it's scary and I, like it's uncomfortable but i feel like i need to do it to also like sort of validate the techniques that i'm trying in the gym to make sure they work in a real environment but i've always like liked the idea of being a better instructor rather than being like the ultimate competitor yeah, right. and focusing on yourself i think it's a lot more valuable to be able to impart that knowledge yeah. effectively to someone else right yeah. and so uh the next question was like, how do you work on yourself? Like, what is your main goal for your own improvement yep. when you don't really have someone teaching you? Um, I, I feel like, uh, f- f- I mean, it really depends. Like for ADCC, I had a very specific, like when you've got a goal, like okay, I said ADCC is what I want to work towards. So I said, well, um, what skill sets do I need to develop to, to win in, in ADCC? Um, I think it's actually some, it's, uh, I think, you at one point said ADCC is just wrestling and leg locks. But yeah, basically. But, uh, <laughs> that's basically what I had in my mind. I said, right. okay, well, like, if that's, to be honest, this is after, probably after ADCC 2017, I fought JT Torres mm-hmm. first round. Um, and I obviously lost that match. Um, but I managed to, like, go the whole match without having my guard passed. And I was like, I kind of thought, like, okay, I feel like my guard retention skills are there if I can develop leg locks and then if it, to try to finish the match and then mm-hmm. have wrestling for overtime mm-hmm. then that's like a complete strategy absolutely it's like uh if you're on top you just sit down for a leg lock they have to either come on top or play your leg game but yeah. then if you're on bottom you can't get past and you can but uh, i was actually wrong about that because lepre kind of passed me and took me back but he's kind of <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of good at that yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, i didn't i obviously didn't think i i obviously didn't think i was an impassable guard but i, I kind of i was like okay i can i'm happy with my guard retention skills i'll, I'll which i should have obviously focused more on um, but yeah, so then um, having that goal of ADCC, I said, well, wrestling and leg locks. So I was training wrestling like five days a week. Mm-hmm. Didn't get to see any wrestling in ADCC. Um, so for me, that is. Um, and, and leg locks. Um, so like that was pretty easy to, to go for. Now that I've finished ADCC and I've, I've got all these things that I wanted to work on that I, that I hadn't. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do, I mean, how do I improve? I th- feel like studying tape and uh, watching good competitors, watching instructionals uh watching uh my own roles and then just problem solving as well you know i think do if you, you think do you have a favorite instructional that you like like all all your entire jujitsu career did anything kind of stand out as like a really valuable resource for you influent um i mean i think back to like when instructionals were like i think now when i watch them i'm i'll generally now if i watch an instructional i'll I'll probably know 90% of the puzzle and I'll be like, oh, they do this this way. Whereas mm-hmm. like probably like 
back in the day watching like Ryan Hall's some of Ryan Hall's ones. I was like, oh, the OG and whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, st- I have um, his fifty fifty DVD. His new one? Oh no, I have the oh, old okay. one. Okay, he's just brought out a new one as well. Did so. he? Yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't advertise that because I have my own one. But <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, guys. I mean, I have the Lachlan <laughs> yeah. Giles. Nah, Giles. Yeah, um, Oh, I'm interested to see what he's... he's well, that's what's so cool yeah. about it. It's like two people can cover the exact same position and have entirely oh, different sure. perspectives yeah, and sure. effective movements and techniques, even though it revolves around the same base layer of yep. 50-50. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, me- I remember I watched... I remember <laughs> before, maybe 10, 10 years ago, trying to win the ADCC trials. I would have been watching Ryan Hall's 50-50 one then. Mm-hmm. And it's funny that that is now my my main game. But so I, was, I was trying to learn leg locks f- from that. Yeah, honestly, being the only reason I studied Ryan Hall's stuff is because he was at Lloyd Irvin's like a year before I got there, basically, or a couple years before I got there. And I watched him because I thought he was amazing coming up in the Northern California train is like a green belt. I thought Ryan Hall was the man and he he yeah. was the man. He was killing everyone with 50 50 inside heel hooks. And that was my first like um for for is that word foyer into like that uh foyer I don't speak I don't speak French bro foyer foyer yeah foyer into leg locks like back in like 2007 I started working inside heel hooks and trying to go to all, like all these no gi grappling events that allowed them and uh it was hugely beneficial for me cuz like there was this whole like dead zone in grappling history like in the late or like 2013 onwards where there wasn't really any leg locks going on anymore for some reason and it kind of fell by the wayside and then the Danaher guys came back and brought it back yeah. to life. And that's why I was so confident to fight Gordon the first time. Cause I was like, I know this game, like yeah. I can handle this, you know, like I've been experienced with this and, the, but they do have like a, t- a different, different perspective yeah, sure. on it. It's totally yeah. different. And I think your perspective is different as well from what I yeah. saw Ryan doing back in yeah. the day as well. Even what he still does. He basically does the same heel hook now in MMA at least. Yeah. I, I haven't seen enough of what he's doing now. I, I'm interested to see what he's doing now from 50, 50 and how much of an overlap. There is, and whether I can pick up. Stuff. He was even doing wrestling tournaments for a while, yeah, so yeah. he kind of had the <laughs> same idea as you, just like yeah. wrestle and leg lock. Yeah, I did wrestling tournaments a few in the last last like singlet and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah singlet and all. Yeah, I, won the I saw that. Actually. I won the nationals in I, Australia. I, think I saw yeah. it. Yeah, wrestling yeah. national yeah. champ. Not that Australian wrestling is like that's know, still uh, saying something. It's, though. Yeah, it's, I mean, cool. it's a big country. The grappling it's country. Country. <laughs> it's a big country. There's like five wrestlers, but it's a big country. <laughs> but th- that's actually significant because I was thinking about this and tell like t- I want to hear your opinions on this. So say you're in Australia and there's some sort of <laughs> this is like really <laughs> stupid, but <laughs> it's funny to think about. There's some sort of like competition and every per there's a massive bracketed organization and every fight is a fight to the death, but for the entire country. So every person is matched up with like some everyone other, in the country. Everyone in the country has to fight to the, to death. the death. Okay, how I, I far? Like, I like where you're going. Would, lo- how far would you make it? You get weapons. Like a, no, hand, bare hand, hand to like hand. MMA, like but like MMA, death. but like to the death. To the death. Like can would a grappler? Is it a completely random? Bracket? So like for, just to think for a smaller scale. Let's think San Diego. Is it a is it a completely it's random. random bracket? Yeah, it's not seated by. Well, I guess let's let's seed it. So, like, the grapplers will fight each other last. Like, the best fighters in San Diego would fight each other last. How, would you make it past? I like, like, I like the, the idea of Australia. Okay, all of Australia. Let's I don't want to have to fight you to the death. Cardio, this is more of a cardio challenge. Okay, because but there's rest time. Okay, it's like, so you feel fresh You feel snack. fresh each time. Yeah. yeah. It's not necessarily like you're not fighting 10 rounds I in a day. I don't want to have to kill you. You have to kill them. I don't want to kill you, though. I know. So, that's, that's the thing. It's like, at some point, you're going to meet up with Craig, Wait, probably. He's going to have to kill me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Or you, you can kill. It? Or you can kill him. Okay. Not gonna have let's to. not worry about the like the moral <laughs> I'm sure implications. I'm sure you got a secret weapon. Let's I'm not worry about the moral <laughs> implications or the people involved per se. Let's just say no. Like, for the sake of argument, you don't have any emotional connections to the people, but maybe they are talented grapplers. Do you think a grappler would make it to the f- the end of that of death match, or would a, like a MMA an MMA fighter, guy right? would make it? Yeah. But I mean, it's isn't like, that their job to? Like right, but it's like they're sport. under. Who's the best Aussie MMA fighter? But don't We've you got like um, Alex, Whitaker. Alexander Volkanovsky for and Whitaker. Oh, Kurt Whitaker. Yeah, but for simulated murder, I feel that grappling would be more effective to actually like fight to the death. Mm. I'm just going like to a knockout uh, knock or a choke. Right. I'm going to go. I go ahead and say that Krav Maga is going to win. I guess if you're adding in like <laughs> eye stabs, and I'm just <laughs> saying, fight to the death. You said. Fight I just to death. would be really curious to see who is in like the top eight. Of each, Up, I'm sure region. Lo- Lockie would be in the top. That's what I'm. That's what I'm course. wondering. It's like how yeah. many I'm pretty small as from well. like an overall population. <laughs> your ability to fight another human how into you, submission. 
Like, you're very high on the list for all of Australia in, in a that, matter of hand-to-hand yeah. -hand combat, right? How can you talk about being small after you just wrecked all those <laughs> monsters? It doesn't matter, yeah, being yeah. small was the... I, yeah, I think being small was your advantage. Yeah, like, it probably was. You wasn't. latched yeah. onto their leg like a fucking leech. As long as you kill them. <laughs> well, I'm like certain that they their... won't be able to fight back for much longer after you take their leg. Yeah, no. There's so much pain in a torn leg if ligament. If you destroy oh their leg to the point that they can't stand on it, yeah. they're not winning the rest of that. You just stomp on their face. Right? Of course. So who do you think would be in the finals for Australia? <laughs> Probably Whitaker. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's Whitaker? Robert Whitaker. The MMA fight. I don't was, follow MMA was anymore. Very yeah, recent UFC champion. Yeah, yeah. he's good. Yeah. He lost yeah. to Israel, right? You couldn't yeah. Imanari roll him fight. into like that was a. Well, he I has lost in grappling matches to leg locks, but he's also beaten the old Romero. So oh, good he just Lord. Yeah. he texts pretty early <laughs> in wrestling matches. Well, let's put it like this: yeah, he's got he, a UFC he's, contract. Why would he, yeah, why would he risk? <laughs> Craig it? Yeah. and yeah. Lachlan are on the other side of the bracket, and Riddick Whitaker is on the other side. Okay, okay. So, I'm still. I guarantee quarterfinals. Quarterfinals, right? Him so, and Craig. How, what's apparently, the population of Australia? Craig's a good striker. Really? Craig yeah, is. yeah. He's got that background. He's in Muay Thai. And he was what? apparently very good oh, at it. Eastern boxing yeah. history. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, he's uh, he's got pretty good wrestling now as well. He's getting there. He might yeah, be a yeah. contender for the yeah, for the Australian deathmatch title. Yeah. <laughs> What's the population of Australia? Do you know? Twenty some twenty five million or something. Twenty four million. Twenty five million. That's Can't small, be. huh? Because so much of it is kind of just barren. It's like the half center. of California. It's nothing in the middle. Yeah. California's about fifty, right? So out of twenty five million people. Lock Wait, are we Lockie including children <laughs> and <laughs> infants? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're, people. Like, <laughs> they're people. <laughs> Which leads me to my next question. Sorry. How I many five-year-olds in a row could you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I think that's kind of interesting. Like grappling, when you as aspire to be a great grappler, it kind of stands for this like level of power in a human-on-human -human battle that is like beyond comprehension yeah. of normal people. But I, feel, I feel like I should, you know, Think of all the police to, officers. For me to claim anything like that, I, I would have to train striking or, or aim it. Like, you know, I haven't, it's been so long since I've had someone trying to hit me. I've probably got so <laughs> many bad habits. Did we like, get a training camp for this tournament? Sure. Yeah. Everyone in the country. You get to like, yeah, you all get to practice like you how to like close distance without getting knocked out. A everyone gets bit. four like, weeks of preparation. Like, you're not really going to be going in there trying to like strike with anyone. You're just trying to close distance and like jump on a leg. And What about the police officers in Australia? Are they well trained? No. You don't not, think so? Not in jiu-jitsu. Like not in, I'm, I'm in grappling, like in combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat. No. Yeah. A lot of them do jiu-jitsu. So they have like, they meet up and they train. On their own yeah, because they want to. They have basic training, but it's not. not How long is the police academy in Australia? Do you know? Ooh, got a girl that I it's about six months. Just did it. I think it's about six months. Six months here. I don't I think might be wrong. I don't think it's long enough. Yeah. I think we There's talked a lot about to that. Cover, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I think we talked about that recently too. In it's Germany, like, it's like more than a year. It's is like it, intensive it, training. Is it dangerous for police to know like lethal submissions? I feel like it's. Oh, I mean, I feel like they should learn to grapple. I think it's a much. It would be a very safe way to control someone right you know it would yeah. increase their confidence i think if and they that would reduce their nervousness which would reduce their desire to shoot yeah. i mean we don't have guns in australia the cops that's do that's true but yeah it, you have yeah, very strict gun laws so i think for us especially knowing grappling would be a massive advantage yeah yeah someone was explaining to me the gun laws like you have to keep it locked up and if you move it from any location to another location you have to tell someone like the, uh, some authority you have to tell them like i'm moving my gun from this house to this house on this date it's really, uh, it's pretty hard to get a permit. Right. right, and they can ask you, like, to see it, I guess, or it's very, very strict. <laughs> Does that result in more, like, drunken brawls? People are a little more frivolous with their... It's a pretty, that's pretty common. Brawls I don't know if Australia. it's more than anywhere like else, people go though. out drinking and they... I feel like it doesn't I mean, happen I as much in the U.S. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I feel like Everyone's there's... high. I think you're disconnected. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've you're just disconnected. I mean, no, I noticed... I go noticed to a bar. Like, um, I've been to a f bars in the, last time? in the last year. How many times have you been to a bar this year? At least tw twice. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Two times this year. But I mean, okay. But I also am around a lot of young men who go out all the time, and I'm. they tell me about their, you know. Their brawls? Their brawls. If it, But it's it's a rare occurrence, and if it does happen, it's, like, very minimal. It doesn't result in, like, some Didn't big we thing. Big fights? And yeah, I we do. I, th I think um, I noticed a big difference going to, actually going to Brazil. Mm. Uh, like, almost yeah, no one, right. there's almost no, like, Fights that I saw when mm. I because everyone out has there. a knife. Yeah, yeah, that's which is my point. Yeah. Is like, does does the the lack of weaponry available like we let people be a little more cocky in we, there? We have a pretty big cult, like in Australia. There's a, there's a culture which they're trying to get rid of, which is to drink until you're very drunk. You know, not just like uh -huh. 
not just like have a beer or two. You know, it's like, it's like who there's can also yeah. a bit of an ice epidemic at the moment. So ice is like that meth. meth? Meth. Yeah, meth. It's yeah. Here, but apparently uh, that's crazy. everywhere. Yeah, I think so. Here in San Diego, it's, it's uh, opiates. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's heroin. Where are they now? It's like is well, that like homeless people under, or is under it the just bridges? Like functional yeah. addicts. Dude, they had to spray down the streets with like chlorine water because there was just so much fucking hepatitis all over the streets. <laughs> They did a test on the street. Yeah, look at all this hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> Clean it no, up. they did. They had to, they they legitimately had to get hoses oh, with no. disinfectant and they hosed down some of the streets in the in like the homeless districts because there was wow. just so much sh- like just needles and blood and fucking stuff. Okay, all over so the streets. Uh, another thought experiment for grapplers. Have you have you been following like the Hong Kong um, yeah. protests and stuff and the police? How they kind of just like attack people with like batons. And the the, p- the people kind of just run away. But I saw a video the other day about five officers in, like, riot gear coming at this one guy. And they kind of just were, like, lumbering at him. And he was kind of, like, trying to get away, but not really. And then they, they tackled him. And I was watching Miha compete at Nogi Worlds. And, like, anyone who just walked at him, he was instantly launched with a judo throw onto their back. And I wonder how many people could, he, like, could he take out, like, five of them as they approach one at a time? Could and they he, have like, so much gear them? to grab onto, right? Their yeah, vest, and then you know, it's just, just a baton. Like, it's like this little bit, like, it what about hurt. Their, what about the riot shield? What about they the don't have a riot sprays? shield. And the, yeah, that's they, weren't, they aren't using pepper sprays. Oh, really? But not all the time. It's like these arrests are happening kind of just, like, randomly. It's like they haven't even done anything. They just kind of pick someone and kind of jump on them. And I wonder if you could judo throw the shit out of them one at a time. I think if you were very, probably. very good yeah. at judo, probably. Yeah. Actually, I don't know, but can they? A good. I feel like a good ju- judo person against me could just grab and throw me. It's you know, like I, a, I'm very. High I don't think I've ever been more terrified to stand yeah. with someone than against a really powerful, yeah. Yeah. Or skilled judoka. Yeah, because yeah, inst- wrestlers will kind of just take you down. Yeah, you can kind of just like go <laughs> down with them. Right. <laughs> but it's like if you get thrown clean by a judo. A right. High level judoka, you'll die. Wrestlers <laughs> drop you onto your butt. Judo yeah. people yeah. drop you on your head. Yeah, and I've been training with Justin Flores recently and like he's much smaller than me he's like probably 160 pounds 155 pounds he's about lachlan size yeah and i mean i he's t- smaller i tower over him and he's an older he's like in his early 40s i think and when i do randori with him like the actual stand-up sparring with him which i've only done a few times i'm completely helpless like i don't have the ability to make grips on him i don't have yeah. the ability to control him in any way and it, when i do i get taken down yeah. or thrown in some way and like that's why that's what inspired me to start training more judo is like he's in, has this immense power over me from a standing position. It's like what am I going to do? Just pull guard against him in right. the, the death match for San Diego? Right. Like what's right. my plan against Justin Flores? <laughs> he's just going to launch me. It just yeah. seems like a really powerful art that people are kind of neglecting in the jiu jitsu scene, especially too in the hard. Well, I think I agree. Yeah. I agree. I don't. It's, it's too hard. Like to actually improve at or like well, you gotta get you're gonna get it thrown yeah over and over. Old that's my neck, why, my shoulders. That's why I won't train judo, man. I don't want to get thrown over and over and but over. But if you know how to get thrown, it you won't. It still yeah, but sucks. Then white belts are gonna throw you. <laughs> it still sucks. I feel like the heavyweights should do it more because because yeah, they, they don't. Rest. I think the heavier you get, the more of a disadvantage it is to pull guard. Are you yes. personally like, vi- like when you see the double guard pull play in the gi? Does yeah. that like upset you? Um. I would, I mean, it's, it doesn't upset me that people are doing it because that's the rules. I, I would I would be for a change in the rules that that encourages some form of stand-up. Do you have a like suggestion for how to make that happen? Yeah. That's <laughs> um, I, I think, oh, sorry, there you go. I, my thoughts are that they haven't decided if the guard is a bad position or not. Uh-huh. So, like, you pull guard, there's no points. Someone yeah. puts you in guard, there's two points. Go from my guard to your guard. There's two points. Like it's not. It's like just, it's either a bad position or it's, it's considered or it's neutral. neutral right now. Yeah. Right. Well, if it's neutral, then I'd almost like to see only then points for um, dominant positions. Mm-hmm. So like remove takedown points, remove sweep points, um, and therefore people would, might still pull guard, but they're going to get like good grips before. You know, it's going to be like a grip fight, get really good grips, pull guard into like something that's going to get you toward the back or right. get you like near a pass or, or something. Um, yeah, because I think that's like most of the problems people have with the IBJJF rule set is that someone's like almost sweeps you and therefore they win. Right. Like 
yeah, you were in what could be considered an inferior position. Yeah. And you almost got to a good I, spot, but I'd stayed on top. Yeah, like uh, I like, abused that through purple belt so hard. Yeah. Like all, <laughs> I just knew that no one could pass my guard, but I yeah. wasn't super confident in my ability to pass or take people down. And if I could pull guard successfully, I would just win every match. Because I would pull, they would never get close to passing, and I would have to just do a sweep attempt and win. Yeah. And I won a hundred matches like that. Like I got submissions, obviously, but against hard p- people who are very talented that I couldn't actually just dominate. I if I just pulled guard safely, it was the match is over basically. So it's like that doesn't really occur. I guess it kind of occurs for people who are standing as well, like top players. You could kind of s- implement a similar strategy, but it almost felt like I was definitely lopsided and like taking advantage of a rule set yeah. that. And then when I faced someone who else had a good guard, like the meows, it resulted in the double guard pull thing, and it's like, yeah, I was doing it too. But that's what I, I was kind of like disgusted with myself, and that's why I like started uh, <laughs> learning more stand up and trying to like be more of a passer as well. Do you think it's more risky to launch an aggressive sweep attempt from guard, or to launch an aggressive guard pass from the top? Which is more risky? I think I think it definitely needs to be understood that having gravity on your side is an advantage, regardless of being on, like, just because you have a dominant guard position, the person on top definitely still has the advantage right and that's why takedowns are worth two points i, I wouldn't so. i wouldn't mind like a negative one for pulling guard that would be okay too yeah just so it like it's yeah. at least it's like okay now it's on you t- if you're gonna pull you gotta do something like you gotta like you gotta a penalty sweep. like or like a actually uh, uh, just just a mi- like i mean if it's just a minus one point oh or, actually or one point to the opponent like th- right. and then it's like okay well you pull guard but you actually have to sweep to and win. if you do and sweep instead of win. just like you're winning yeah, yeah. but the second i like that the pr- yeah. issue with that i think is the second you make it uh, a negative for pulling guard. Then you have the same issue on p- of people on their feet, right? of no one wanting mm-hmm. to pull guard, and then people having underdeveloped takedown games as well, right? But I suppose that then it's like at least like you can go like, oh, I can pull and then still sweep and be winning. You know, so like oh, if they're confident, yeah, if true. they're really confident in their guard, it's still a good, mm. a good yeah. strategy. That's true, that's true. Because yeah. so much of it is the seesaw battle of who's on top last, yeah. basically. That was like how I would win matches. It's like if I double guard pull or I pull first, as long as I'm on the top at the end, you win. That's so how it was with the meows as well in double guard pull situations. I have a new rule idea. I mean, this is a good time to pitch it, I think. Okay. Let's hear it. If someone mounts you for a long period of time, let's say 30 seconds or maybe I'll say a minute, you lose. Period. That's it. It's a pin. You're dead. You lost. Because I get really tired of people just laying there, right? And just mm-hmm. like doing this, just freezing up, and yeah. then you can't do anything to them. It's sub only, That's especially for f- sub only. I think yeah. I think if and Seth, you can win a match as well, because if someone mounts you in real life, you're dead. Like this is like the self defense thing. You mean right? this the I think the Australian death match. <laughs> yeah, I think I think self defense people can get behind this rule set. Okay, right for sub only. I think it's more for sub only, but I guess it would be it could go on IBJJF too. But if someone mounts you for a minute and they hold it and you cannot escape, you lose. You got pinned, and I think more wrestlers would then come into the grappling arts. See. Right, this is a wrestler thing, mounting okay. people. Right, that's how you win in wrestling. You pin them. Right. So especially ADCC, I feel like at ADCC this should be a thing, because it's a submission wrestling tournament. It's wrestling with submissions. So if you can put someone on their back and hold them on their back for a minute, in a massively dominant position where you could literally beat their face into a pulp, I think you should win. So what I want to do is I actually want to test some r- new rule sets what do you think of my rule i think i well i think we have to test it because i think all of every new rule has its pros and cons don't them. you think people would hustle really hard to get out of the mount position if they got mounted they're like oh shit i got one minute to get out of here yeah think about how hard they would work to get out for sure i think and just having points in general will do that as in like it does as in like if it's if it's a submission only yeah mount's not that good but if there's points and then suddenly you're like all right i'm, I'm mounted i'm down by Whatever points and I have to get out, I have first. to get out to yeah. to win. You know, um, and no one would sub. Yeah, I mean, no, but, you, but you can submit them when they because they they're encouraged yeah, to get out. When there's points, they're actually encouroged to try to true, get out because they're going to yeah. be losing. So if they're on the mount, they're probably lost. <clears throat> like but. I mounted Thor for eight minutes, and I could not do anything <laughs> to him. Who Thor in the third place match? Who's I, Thor? The John Blink. Oh, I mounted okay. him, and I sat there for eight minutes. <laughs> That's I, a good effort. It was, it was, but he wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> doing any. Well, he was defending the, the guillotine attempts. And he, if he turned on his side too much, I would grab the guillotine. So he couldn't turn on his side, but I couldn't attack him because he wouldn't turn on his side. So we just kind of got stuck there. And I felt really bad. It was such a boring match. Um, I feel like, you know, if I could have mounted him for one minute and he lost, that would have been great. One thing, they <laughs> should, one, one thing they should definitely do is 
points for chest to back. Mm. Like from turtle positions? Like, yeah. No or hooks. Anywhere. Yeah, I think just, I mean, if you get a seatbelt and your chest to back for three seconds, that should be two points. And then maybe but another two for the... At least body triangle. It's like, that's, that's probably, that's one thing that annoys me. It's like you do, te- like you almost, well, I suppose it's technically an almost, but it, I mean, so is mount and then they get out, right? If you don't submit them, everything's an almost. Yeah. You know, like you take someone's back, but you haven't got your second hook in. Right. And you get an advantage for that. Whereas well, like... That's like a... It's, that's the strategy I use defensively yeah. in IBJF all the time. Is if someone's about to pass my guard, I just turtle because yeah. I'm very confident. I'm like I'm more confident in my back defense than I am in my guard. Really, like I think <laughs> I have a better chance of escaping and resetting from a turtle than I do from can someone I, coming close onto a pass. Can I take a moment and explain why people do this? Because I don't sure. know. I don't. I don't know that everyone knows that rule in IBJJF. Okay. If someone passes your guard, and you lay on your back and they get side control, that's three points for mm-hmm. the guard pass. If the person on bottom turtles, it negates that three points. Yes. Like there's no more three points. And even if I pass your guard and you turtle and you stay there for five seconds, and even if you then roll to side control and I just I get the side control that I would have had a second ago. There's no points. There's no points. Right. So turtling and, and exposing your back to the, the passer is a way to negate those three points for the guard pass. And it's not just the three points. It's like if you stay flat on your back. You're giving them three points and then they have the chance to get two for neon belly and then right. another four for mount. Right. So it's this incredible, this chain reaction. So it's almost always better to take the risk Turtle. of maybe turtling because at least it's just four points if you right. mess it up. And you can keep scrambling. And you can maybe get out. Right. I, I try and teach my like st- students who are unfamiliar with the competitive scene. They always just lay flat. They yeah. would always rather keep their hands in front, but I tell them to turn away and it's maybe counterintuitive for people to do, but it, like it's much better to cultivate your back defense and back escapes to deal with strong guard passers. That's what, like what you were saying, I think would be solved by, by giving points for good positions. Yeah. You know, give points for side control. Yeah, right. So, so like, th- however you got there. So ADCC is, a, it's yeah. side yeah. control points. It yeah. doesn't matter how you got there. You got there, you get the points, period. Yeah. yeah. And do you train in the gi? I do, yeah. Do you, have you competed in the gi anytime recently? <laughs> it's been a while. It's probably been over two years. Two years. I, I, not against competing in the gi. I just yeah. I was just very ADCC focused. Yeah, yeah. Or you're for the two year gap, yeah. basically between ADCCs. Yeah. Do you plan on competing in the gi in the future, or do you want to kind of keep those leg lock and fools? <laughs> Possibly. I'll have to like. I'd have to be roll. I do think it's hard to stay on at the top of of both. Not not that I was ever really at the top, but <laughs> uh, you know, like I'd have to feel like I'm rolling very well in the gi to mm-hmm. do something like a world. It's, a, it's always a big effort coming to the context LA. switching between the technique yeah. application is very difficult to, for me as well. Yeah. Like especially when I was training in a way that was like eight months gi, four months no gi. Like just at the end of the four months, I start feeling okay in yeah. no gi, you know? And then the season's over. Yeah. And then you go back to the gi. It's like pretty difficult to maintain a level of like that sharpened edge skill, which is like there's always that like one little level above when you just feel good where you're just like sh- super sharp focused on one particular thing. I always also find uh, gi harder on the body. Um, really? Really. Yeah. Yeah. I find yeah. the opposite. Yeah. I feel like the gi heals me. <laughs> the gi, the <laughs> gi is I more, d- yeah. it hurts I, my fingers. I feel more. like it's, um, you can, like, when you get a grip on the gi, you can put 100% of your force into mm-hmm. it, and they'll be doing the same on you, and it won't slip. Whereas in no gi, you kind of like, you hold a, you know, I'll hold a wrist or an elbow, but, I pull hard as I can at, at slips, so it's actually not. It's more about like tracking than than yanking, right? Um, and I find like you know those forces of someone trying to break your posture and you're trying to fight out of it, or you're you know pulling on. You know, well, Keenan's experience in nogi is different because his neck gets fucked up, <laughs> 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 and that doesn't happen in the gi so much. Only by you though, which was weird because my neck's been fine ever since I stopped training with you. But I had some neck injuries also this in the ADCC camp. Really, the guys would grab the head and hold on to it for too long. Yeah. It's a hard one because I, I sometimes I'm like, yeah, I want to get really good at um, guillotine. Def- we say guillotine, yeah. gu- guillotine defense. It's French. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's probably correct. correct. Yeah. <laughs> guillotine defense. Um, but it's no fun. But it's yeah, like whenever it's I do it, I'm like, w- within a week of trying to Everyone's do that, I'll, I'll have a sore neck. So it's like, like judo. And then everyone <laughs> else is so yeah. Yeah. No one wants to train it because it's not fun. Yep. It's, I, yeah. It's much better to just train how to not get put in it, yeah. right? That's like the best preventative defense. It's the same thing as like triangle chokes. Like you don't train how to escape a triangle choke. It's you're just 
Fuck. Don't you love yeah. that question? But, but I feel like How do I escape this? <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> I, I feel like if you're going to do wrestling, you know, if, if you wanted to, like, you know, for ADCC with wrestling, I was like, okay, like, there's a good chance someone decent has a good has a good guillotine uh-huh. or guillotine, and um, you know, and I get stuck, you know, I get caught there. Like, I want, I want to be good at getting out. You know? Yeah. Like, um, not just like, because it's easy to say don't get put in there, but when you shoot. It's, it's almost impossible. It's, to yeah. Which is, but it's why you don't see a whole lot of shots happening exactly. at ADCC yeah. because it's like such a disadvantaged position. Yeah. Like your ability to actually work some sort of functional escape from the position is very minimal yeah. compared to the amount of attacks they can throw at you nonstop following every escape attempt while you get tired and your neck gets fucked up and you're getting choked. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. So if you guys want to learn more about the guillotine, go uh, check out the uh, hemiotine system available online. Which cannot mention at the moment because this this Kino podcast is Kino, about Kino will get Lachlan's <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know just kidding and you've you've been putting out instructionals for a while right you you produce a lot yeah. of your own instructionals previously as um, well right yeah uh, a few. probably a year and a half ago it was the first one um actually before that i had like a, a half guard seminar i did that i'd put up online um okay yeah uh, but yeah uh yeah, probably a year and a half, really. Yeah. And what what's the YouTube channel that people can find? Oh, of at? course, yeah, yeah, absolute MMA St Kilda. Okay. Um, and how long have you been working at that? That's probably like been four years, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Three okay. or four years. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was. It's just funny. It was like most things. Like it was just. It wasn't like, oh, let's make a YouTube channel and it'll be great to, you know, get your name out there. I think it was just a student of mine that just said, oh, we should just put some, some of your videos up online. Like just to have a revision. Point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then um. I kind of just slowly built from there, which is cool. And you have you have a bit of an online following now through that, <laughs> as well as just like the How big wins you had. You blew up on Reddit, especially Reddit. Seems yeah, to yeah. Be Reddit like likes me, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> they only like three of us. It's me, you, and Craig. Basically, yeah. <laughs> they, they hate Gordon. They hate Josh. They hate just about everyone. Oh, they don't you. like. They don't like you. Why well, he always like talks shit about them on the podcast. I never talk <laughs> shit about anyone. I read it. Reddit. All these guys are a bunch ne- of bitches. I, I've never said that either. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that. <laughs> I just feel like I get a lot of a lot of hate from them. I think it's easy yeah. to focus on the hate on the internet. I don't even so, go on Reddit. Like, do, you, do you ever go and like reply to all the positive comments that no, you get? No, look at just oh, ignore them. Here's, 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 like, here's the thing. Thanks, guys. I, I never go on Reddit. Period. Um, I just hear things from people who are on Reddit, and I think they focus on the negative things. They're like, "Oh, oh man, Reddit just ripped you apart for this <laughs> or that." I don't even go on there. I don't want to see it. I'm sure if there's good things on there, they saw it and no one told me about it. Yeah. Is, um, I have no beef with Reddit. I got the I did a I did a video about um, oh, yeah. Khabib and uh, Kab- the Kab- the guillotine that Khabib got caught in. Who's he? Who's he? Colby? Was it Colby? No. no. Oh, <laughs> someone finished Khabib. No, this is bad. No, no. Is it, it something? Poirier. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I did a video about like some adjustments Poirier could have made to um, to help with that guillotine. And oh. <laughs> comments on that. Reddit? I think I actually no no this is on YouTube but um they told, uh, I think they, I, yeah they told you shut the fuck I up. I might I might have <laughs> I might have like put like a uh, bit of a clickbaity title like you know, you know oh, okay. how he could have finished Khabib or something. <laughs> so, right, yeah. right. Uh, and yeah you know, most of it was actually the Khabib fanboys like, Right. You know, they're just what, MMA what, people. Yeah, what do they say? Like, no. Try that on Khabib. Get out there <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Get out there yourself, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and there was that self defense, Berimbolo self defense. Oh yeah yeah That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So this is probably like Seven years ago, I did a, a joke video about using the Berambolo against a knife. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, that's out there somewhere. It gets it gets brought up every every couple of years. It, yeah. it, it makes an emergence <laughs> again. Um, but we, I mean, we we're clearly joking, but we didn't like laugh. Oh, I was like you almost. La- I was laughed. almost laughing, but I wasn't. But the comments are just like that would never work. Oh you know, my like god! <laughs> Andres did that too, right? With the Oma Plata DVD. He we made? did. We did an Oma Plata self defense sequence at, at <laughs> some right. point where he actually disarms an attacker from yeah. with a standing Oma Plata, yeah. and I posted it <laughs> to, to like promote it on the YouTube channel. Similar thing yeah. for people who just don't have a concept of what jiu jitsu really is, like yeah. taking it super serious. And we even did a video about wrist locks. Like, yeah, we did like seven wrist locks, seven and I called deadly. it the seven deadly wrist locks. And right. it's like my most viewed video on YouTube and I'm teaching legitimate wrist locks that you can pull off in jiu-jitsu situations from standing close guard like they're totally legitimate Kalasans everyone finishes people with these but because they look like fake martial arts 
everyone was just like, well, what are you going to do when he punches you in the face with the <laughs> other hand? And then somehow it transcended just the jiu-jitsu community and started, like, I started getting oh, Aikido right. guys and yeah. judo yeah. guys yeah. and MMA guys, and they all just, yeah. like, flooded the comments. And at a certain point, the video is just gone. Like, you can't, <laughs> yeah. I don't even bother anymore. Don't worry about it. I don't even look at it anymore. It's just, like, a, a weird science project it's gone awry. There's a few times when you get on there and you're like... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You start typing. Yeah. yeah, you never mind. I, I, I never yeah. have that second part. <laughs> <laughs> I just go hard or I don't go at all, and then maybe I'll go back and delete it if I was too harsh on someone. Because I'll go back and look at the comments that I've actually written. They all have a like a really like snotty, Sa- like sassy yeah, vibe sassy. to all of them. It's yeah. like, that's is that really how I want to like just portray myself yes. in the comment tell me the trick yes. is, yeah, the, tr- the trick is to type it and then delete it and don't actually don't, <laughs> just get it out don't, and then yeah, delete don't it. click send that's what i tell people to do when they want to message me just fucking type it out read it pretend you sent it and then fucking delete it i don't, don't want to read it that's what i'm saying though i feel like i take I, f- I feel like everyone once they have some sort of internet communication with people they don't know it's so easy to focus on the negative stuff and yeah. not yeah. it's 90 percent positive yeah. but those yeah. are the ones you just like <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like like right. like like you don't actually respond That's and so give true. some sort of like valid response that they they're the ones who actually deserve it and then it just cultivates and propagates the negative attention that everyone's trying to get anyways the troll community you don't know who's a troll and who's not yeah. i get people all the time writing like mean things on my keenan online page and it totally seems like they're just being mean and i'll like respond and be like dude like that's not how it is. This is how it is. And he's like, oh, no, I'm just trolling you, man. Aww. Like, I'm just playing mm-hmm. around. And yeah. it's like, well, cool. why did you say it then? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just a weird attention I, thing. I do actually kind of like Reddit for that in that it's, um, I like Reddit has the downvote thing. Right. So if someone they, makes a bad comment, like in, I think on, on Facebook, for example, if someone makes a controversial comment, it gets more attention and more, mm-hmm. and it gets like it's mm. the first one yeah, that people yeah. see. It's more relevant. Yeah. Because uh, everyone's responding to it. Whereas on Reddit, well. it'll get downvoted and it gets, almost, it eventually gets removed. Like, uh, like they almost, um, I think if it gets enough, it's to, it's it gets into the negative. The view, like, yeah. It's like you have to like click it, click on like something censored. for it to actually show up. Yeah. You know? yeah. And Which you would think good. that would breed a really cool culture, but then it also has like weird side effects. I think effects it's overall well. pretty good yeah. compared, to, compared to Facebook arguments. Maybe I should invest more time on Reddit. It's interesting. It's just a different thing. It's just another social network, but all anonymous, but this, with some sort of moral rule of have what is guys, right and what is wrong, which is like un, really clarified. Have you guys checked out BJJ Link? Oh, yeah. We have a sponsor for this podcast, okay. BJJ Link. I've, it's a social media app for jujitsu people only. Mm. Yeah. So Super. if you ever wanted to link up with your BJJ fellows. Oh, we got T-shirts. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh these wow. are for us. Wow. I didn't even know we had t-shirts. I didn't know either. Check them uh, out. <laughs> I wish I had cool. known this before we started the episode. What size are these? Boom. Medium. So that's for you. BJJ oh. Link. Thank you. You can have that. Yeah. Oh, so look. Cool. It's kind of like a combination of Facebook and Reddit put together. Kind of looks like a forum. but kind of has that uh, Facebook vibe to it where you can, you can like. It has a thumbs up button that you can like. But the thumbs up has finger tape on it. Amazing. What a de- what detail. I like the little things like that. Design. I like the little things, man. But I think the, the main reason for this app is for people who are in areas they need people to train with or to connect with in a jiu-jitsu capacity. Yes. You can find them. You can find gyms and you can find people who are yes. around your skill level to meet up with and train with. Is so that, it has a... Or to date. Is it like well, what, obviously. You use it however you want, I Obviously guess. the <laughs> real mission here is to meet chicks and, you know, go out. <laughs> Of course, that's I'm obvi- sure there's millions of chicks on there. Obviously, that's the goal. Like, I <laughs> the got 98% at, <laughs> male jiu-jitsu community. Is. Look at all. Well, I'm trying to think. Oh, I got Robert, Joel, Francisco, Walter. Okay, yeah. So where, where can our listeners lot of guys. find it? They search it on the App Store, right? It's on the App Store, yeah. Um, DJ Link. You got to you got to you got to make the account on the on your web browser on your computer, but then you can you can download the app and then sign on the app and. So everyone who is a likes to troll Josh online. You know how much he loves your messages. Go find him on BJJ Link <laughs> and link up with Josh on BJJ Link. Yeah, I'm on there. I, got, I put a nice shirtless picture on my profile so like you can sp- it's black and white and I'm swinging a kettlebell like trying to, trying to be super tough. Yep. Yeah, so check it out. Are there any other capabilities of the app? I it, I believe it's still somewhat in development. So yeah. get in at the ground floor while you still can. But I'm just saying the the map, the global map is super cool because it has a literally a global map uh-huh. and then it has numbers ev- all over the world and those numbers represent academies and then you can zoom into it and you can see where all the academies are. And I didn't I definitely didn't put Legion AJJ on there, but it was on there. So it's some some someone's like curating that and adding yeah, gyms. Yeah. Look at that map. 
with all those big numbers. So if you're oh, cool. traveling, it would be probably be really useful if you're traveling to a different I country and you're trying to find some jujitsu. I wish I could show it to Is the it camera. in Australia? I don't. I, uh, I think, I think they Yeah, the sorry. They burn. Yeah. I think it caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it actually has. <laughs> <laughs> it caught on fire and disappeared. Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm sure it does. Um, yes, it is on there. And there's a gym in Perth. I see a gym in Perth. And I see maybe that's Sydney. Oh, there's like. Okay. I'm trying to zoom in. My phone's super broken too. Anyways, yes, it has Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Australia exists. We'll check it out. Yeah. So anyways, guys, check out BJJ Link. It's super cool. Is the website bjjlink.com? Yes, it is. <laughs> and that's where you have to make your profile because I think the app doesn't have the functionality yet because it's still... You new. just have to create the account and okay. then on the app you can build the profile. Cool. Yeah, and then you can connect with your friends and then you, can, you can put your accomplishments, your, your tournament accomplishments. You can put your BJJ start date. Of course, you have your belt level on there so everyone can see how fucking badass you are. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you respect people way more on Reddit when you see that they have a black belt? <laughs> like, doesn't their comment... I guess black belts, you have to get throw them a little bit of like... Don't you think they're... Right, you know about life. Is you their comment worth something. so much more? I mean, what is a black belt worth to you, Josh? How much like would you... In, in terms would of monetary sell, value? Would you sell your black belt for any amount of money? Fuck yeah. And then you... Not the black belt itself, but what is what it has given you. What is it oh, associated sell with? Sell my skills? Yeah, like what do is you a get, rap do you become a brown belt? Really? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good question. Does it just bring you back I think to that's brown? That's good, and then you go back to black with what you know. There's, there's this. Uh, it's like asking, would you sell your Instagram? And account? some of the the marketing events that I've attended for the gym owners right. back in the past, when I was like 18 or 19, going to the Lloyd Urban marketing events, like there's a heavy emphasis on like squeezing every dollar out of your client, the clients that you can. And they, they're self-aware that it's, like, kind of, like, overly salesy, right? But the way that it was justified to the gym owners was, like, think about your black belt and what jiu-jitsu has given you. Like, all the connections you've made through it, all the techniques you've learned, the, the people you've met, the experiences you had. At what what value point can you really put on all of that? And for it to be taken away and you're just put back into the normal world without jiu-jitsu touching your life, would you ever sell all of everything that jujitsu has given you, what would be the price tag? A million dollars? Would you do it for a million dollars? Yeah. Like all the p- the French tax free or <laughs> yeah. like a million in my and pocket I, or I got to pay taxes? Like American pay taxes. dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I personally answer the fucking question. I personally would not. I would not yeah. do it for anything. Even when I had just first got well, my black I'll belt, it's like because it's my entire identity, and I think for a lot of people, it becomes a huge part of yeah. their identity. And so it's like that's how that was justified in the sales event I was like bullshit. you're giving something to bullshit. someone that's invaluable and so like you I, deserve to like i call bullshit every man every man ha- every man has his price is what i believe what's yours i mean if i offered 10 billion dollars yeah, i on. wouldn't do it man shut up it's you're all I've got. Shit. What am I gonna do? Like, if I don't know jujitsu, I'm just be useless. You obviously, you <laughs> go <laughs> learn judo. Ten billion, dollars. Ten know, billion like, <laughs> dollars, Keenan. I'm not gonna be able to learn jujitsu. Do you, can you, do you again. know how many zeros that is? I'm sure it's a how lot. Z- what am I gonna do? With it? I'm not gonna be able to start a like a space company like how many Elon zeros Musk. Is it? <laughs> I don't think you have to. Do, I don't think you have to start any companies when you've got ten billion dollars. Yeah. So if you were in an accident and you had amnesia, and you were like you just didn't know jujitsu, would you do it again? Would you go from white belt? I would try, but I'd be so sad. <laughs> but you wouldn't be, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be sad. Know. Yeah, you wouldn't have any idea. I, I, well, I would, there would be video evidence of like what I was, and I'd just be, You'd just be like, utter garbage me? again. <laughs> like, sorry, guys. Actually, would you start from was the start? I was in an accident. I would have to, I think. I guess that would be kind of fun. It would be fun. I would just watch a lot of tape yeah. of myself. Be like, I do me? that. <laughs> What's the, what is that? Okay, I'm going to try that. Oh, I'm good at this. Does anybody just wonder how long it would, you know, I've been training 17 years. Like, if I had to teach myself, how quickly could I take like so back to the 15 year old me that started like how quickly could i take which is why i think level? you should legally be allowed to clone yourself and raise it as a child yeah and Just then like where would you <laughs> like how how much more advanced could you make yourself at that yeah. earlier stage which is why people who have twin brothers in jiu-jitsu they're totally cheating because yeah. it's like you have the perfect yeah we're told a bunch of freaking cheaters. I mean, like look at all of the brothers that are do amazing twins? In jiu-jitsu. Twins. they are twins yeah. they're are twins they? yes fraternal twins yeah, they were born like one after the other. Oh, yeah. Why is Hoffa so much better? <laughs> no, no, Hoffa and Gee are not. Oh, no, okay, no, no, that's no, what no. we're talking oh, about. Yeah, Rotolos. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rotolas are twins, no, obviously. They, the, the Mendes brothers are, I think, a two-year difference okay. or something. But regardless, having an older brother, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. A, I think Hoffa's the younger brother, but beats up the older brother, which is which is common. Does, does the younger usually beat the older? 
They kind of get the they I think, have to. They get the tougher. They get into it two years earlier right. because the older yeah, brother yeah, yeah, starts, yeah. and then the younger brother starts two years earlier, and then gets to have that like two year yeah. head start. Did, did you know Geo's the younger brother from Geo and Boogie? Okay, uh-huh. I had no idea. I always thought he was older. But then you got a weird situation like um, Nikki Ryan. Yeah, that's Gordon a big Ryan, difference, though. Where it's a liter- literally massive size difference as yeah. well. Do you, have any, do you have any siblings, Clogan? i got a brother. He did train, and then he, he got injured too often. He got so beaten up. Did you hurt him? him? No, nah, I didn't. No, he, he, he hurt himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny the way you, that the tone of his voice changed a little bit when we started talking about his brother. Like, ah, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of the tone I, I sent. It's like, ah, yeah, no, he hurt himself. You're dude. an only child, though. I have a sister, dude. Oh, right, you do. I yeah. forgot. She's in Portland. I have a sister who trained jiu-jitsu who started at the same time as me and would just mercilessly beat me up. She used all to bully time. him. I would, she'd no make way. me cry with j- grappling. Like she, my, my brother was better than me at pretty much every... He was older, but he was like every sport. I think he was actually more... Not just better because he was older. He was actually like more skilled at pretty much every sport that we... Really? used to play like football, cri- Australian football, uh, cricket, basketball, um, tennis. Actually, I was better than him at tennis. What is he doing um, now? He's a teacher. He's not doing any sport now. He's a he's a school teacher. Hmm. <laughs> so, then, uh, so I guess you win. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you win. Yeah. No, um, speaking of your uh, school te- speaking of school teachers and academics, what is your history through your academic Tell learning, how and how did that tie I in? I know with you're your super jiu-jitsu? smart. Um, so I mean, I, I did my undergraduate physiotherapy degree, and then I, uh, so I went from high school straight into university finished my physiotherapy degree is it called work. uni yeah yeah uni, university <laughs> we call it like uni yeah okay just everything sure. everything you just take Short, like the first little bit and then an e brecky an o, yeah brecky you got it yeah exactly. brecky yeah. <laughs> yeah well i think a guillotine Lock. should be called gilly a what a gilly a guillotine yeah a guillotine gilly yeah gilly. Gilly. write that down gilly. australia <laughs> <laughs> write that down australia gilly. it's called a gilly from now on There'd be some people in Australia that would, would call that. Yeah, I, well, they will now that they hear this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like I'm putting it. it out there right now. Gilly <laughs> in Australia. So, so we, we went to train with <laughs> in Sydney. He's like, oh, he calls it Jewy. Jewy? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. oh, we have a guy Jew-y. here who calls it Juji. <laughs> Juji? He's like, oh, Juji. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to train with Juji. Yeah, so then uh, I worked as a physiotherapist for a few years, kind of like about 30 hours a week and I was training with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started my PhD. So I cut down my physio work again to about 20 hours a week of doing my PhD, doing my PhD. And then, um, uh, and then when we opened the, we, we opened the gym at some point as well, which I got quite busy cause I was doing a little bit of physio work, mm. um, c- training and coaching and, yeah. and finishing the PhD. So that was a four. It, was, it took four years to finish the you d- PhD. You just well. wrapped it up last year, right? What is the two years ago? Two years ago. Yeah. Two what does the maybe? physio work involve? Exactly. Um, so it's like a, you know, someone comes in with an injury. Uh-huh. Um, rehab and you have to diagnose it, mm-hmm. uh, then give them rehab or depending 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 what it is, you might have to send them to a surgeon or mm-hmm. get, get them to get scans or whatever. Once you know, did you have a special a specialty area in that? Yeah, well my research was on knees, so. <laughs> Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did, yeah, I was on like, um, patellofemoral pain, which is a basically like kneecap mm. pain. It's, it's actually co- more common in like runners and basketballers, volleyballers. And Do you, and do so you feel on. that that understanding of the anatomy of the knee has helped you in any way? Or is that sort of a, something that is over exaggerated by people? Who, like in, a lot of people say like engineers have like some understanding of physics and mechanics that helps them in the actual jujitsu application. I don't find that to be true. It's it's hard to say. Like, I mean, I know where I want to... Like, when I'm applying a heel hook, I know where I want to direct the force, like, where the ligament is. But I could also just tell someone that. You know, right. like, you, you could... you could, I think, like... Uh, you don't, I, you I, don't I need thought, four years of graduate work to figure yeah, this out. Yeah. You can, you explain, probably, it, you can yeah. explain it in one Lachlan seminar. You probably yeah. tap quicker. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, yeah, that's the Yeah, when you actually the know surgery. the damage you're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I, th- I kind of, like, I've had... Phases were like, oh, like you know, now that I know anatomy, I can make up my own submissions. But that never worked. Jiu Jitsu has <laughs> done a very good job at working out you need what, some what like submissions we- weeding work out the bullshit. Yeah, you need the, um, a kneecap dislocation submission. Yeah. I've had my kneecap dislocated oh, you could, twice. You, you could probably actually, you could probably do that, but that would be, it'd be a bit dodgy because <laughs> it's like wouldn't be something they could tap to. 
It's like yeah, it just, just pops off. Yeah, you could just give it. That's a, incredibly painful. Yeah. I don't think give that information away now. Someone can just yes. give you a little yeah, <laughs> a Didn't, perfect little karate chop. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you have your kneecap slide out in the middle of a match? Yeah. Or, or as a training that was probably or was my a most badass moment uh, I've ever experienced. It was a competition match. I don't like, I don't talk about it much, but thanks for bringing it up because I felt very tough in this. Just happened. so you guys know, he wrote me a note and slipped it to me under the table. He's like, <laughs> "Hey, hey, Josh, bring this up." Now, someone shot in on a single leg, and I did the thing where you try and turn it into the movement so your knee goes away, so you can spin to the back, kind of, yeah. which I do all the time. But the guy had a really secure grip on my leg, and as I turned, my kneecap, the edge of it, just clipped the oh. mat. Yeah. And like oh. his weight went into it, and it just slid right off, right in the middle of the match. And I just kind of like let out. Of, I, I just like fell down and like was in pain, and like they, <laughs> everyone could tell something was wrong. And I just straightened it, and it pot slid back into <sighs> place. And I, it was the second time it happened, so I I had uh, pushed it back into place before when JT did it to me, and then the second time I I finished the match and I won as well. They paused the well match done. though. They did stop the match, which is interesting because so, I'm not sure the rules on that. Like, so if, I got a question for this. Yeah, why is that not a, a loss? I guess because it's an unintentional submission. <laughs> it's like something. <laughs> <laughs> he submitted right. me with an, an illegal knee lock by accident. But if you have a cramp in the middle of a match, you yeah. lose. If you need to stop because of a cramp in a match, it's a loss. Yeah. Right. So you should always just say that it's a joint yeah. pain it's instead like a, of a uh, cramp. Like if, uh, if you have a poke. cramp, just like, my uh, knee's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop my finger. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. It's weird that you can, you can, something can be hurt and you can stop and take a break and then restart. But th- I'm very thankful for those injuries because they led me to start doing a lot more leg exercises, which I think has helped me immensely. Like having stronger legs was like the best thing I could have ever done for injury prevention as well as like actual jujitsu performance. And Never competition. skip leg day. Yes. Do it twice a week. Lucky doesn't do it. But he, like you he said, he's a, he's a <laughs> Look natural. It. Where are I all do. these nats Look coming from? The, be- the, the greatest thing. benefit from doing legs consistent- consistently is you're going to have a, a very nice looking butt. <laughs> everybody benefits from this. Oh, everyone. Everyone. You the benefit from population. it. The people you date benefit from it. Everyone who gets to look at it benefits from it. It's true. <laughs> who doesn't like looking at a nice butt? I don't know. Right, exactly. I don't know, Josh. Exactly. I'm just saying. <laughs> I do I'm just saying, guys, do legs. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's good for you. Um, I wanted to ask a question way earlier and it's still in my mind and I don't know why, so I'm just gonna throw it out there. Uh, I was just curious if the if the classes at your academy lean towards no gi or lean towards a gi or is it fifty fifty? It's good pretty pun there it's at the end. Pretty much a fifty fifty. Um but the no gi is more busy. Yeah, they prefer no gi. Yeah, which is do you think I that's think because no gi people came to you because they like no gi or do you think this Australia just prefers no gi or I don't think it's uh, Australia. I don't think it's Australia. Yeah, I think it's actually more in our gym but maybe I, you, you know, attract it, nogi people you know what i think it is i think when people start jujitsu they don't have the gi in mind and what we have at our intro classes because it's easier to get someone into jujitsu if they don't have to buy a gi first so That's we true. have yeah the, our intro classes like we actually have two gi and two nogi ones but our intro ones are much more popular with nogi because they're like well i'll go to the one that doesn't have a gi and then they train no gi and then we've got enough classes in the schedule that they can be like, Oh, I can just train. You know, I don't ever, they don't ever have to put the gi on. So r- I think right from the start th- that might sort of lean but to people. But it is also like seeing Craig two years ago and then you do well. I think, I think it does the, inspire advanced, like the blue yeah, and purple. For, for the already, exi- yeah. So um, we definitely have a, a more no gi. And like most of the now. super fights I no gi now and. It's yeah. funny because when I used to train, I was, you know, if you went back five years ago, I was I barely trained no gi. <laughs> um, and like I would do a bit, but, I, but um, sorry, go on. No, no, you've got to finish. Um, I used to like look at maybe maybe a bit longer than five years ago, but I used to, I used to look at no gi and be kind of like, oh, yeah, it's just you do the same thing as in the gi, but there's less options. You know? yeah. so that's how I used to see it. Whereas right. now I think like you do get uh, into the intricacies of it. There's a lot of like, I think because there there are less like you know you can't just grab the you know yeah. sleeve uh, or, or the lapel you can there are like real intricacies in like you know whether you grip like this or like of course. this makes yeah. like such a big a big yeah. difference or, or if you're you know, one centimeter up or one centimeter down exactly yeah, yeah. which obviously sure. matters it's the same in the gi as well but I think because there's more options in the gi sometimes that gets some of these people don't get so like uh, tuned into the very very small things that that matter in the battles which are actually probably what the best guys are, uh, are doing, you know, they've, they've actually got quite a narrow game, but they've got every little thing tuned in. So, sorry, I know you got something to say, but I just want, <laughs> I just want to interrupt you. Now, please. Um, 
so when you f- when you did EBI, remember we yeah. did, you came and visited San Diego yeah, yeah. and you did the EBI. Yeah. That was like 2016 or 15, maybe. Yeah, it was a good three 16, years ago. Yeah. I think. yeah, at least. Right. Yeah. And so like that was one of your first nogi black belt competitions, or well, not first. Yeah, I, I mean, but I mean, like you you were just getting into nogi back then, or what? I mean, I I've done th- so five years ago was my first ADCC. Okay. Um. So I was probably training it there. We, we were training it in the lead up to that, I guess. Um. I'd been competing. I'd competed no gi before then. I d- when I say like, uh, I, I would train, you know, maybe uh, eight sessions a week in the gi, and it would be like two no gi or, or one no gi before that. Whereas, um, that what was your gi game almost, like? Um, I played a lot of single leg X at first. I just I used to be. I was probably the first guy in Australia to start playing the the berimbola. Mm. Um, I remember seeing Huffa and Gear's brown belts, and I was like, "What's that move?" Before even before that even had a name for it. I was mm. like, what's that move they're doing? You know, and I started like trying it out the in training. The spinning move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's that spin thing um, they're doing? I think like two months later, so I saw it was called the, the Berimbolo. Um, I probably don't even pronounce it right. You pronounce it Berimbolo? Berimbolo. I'm probably I, used to it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's called, uh, I called it the Berimbolo. I think, I think they did really? for a while. In Australia, yeah, it's called the, the Bur- Burmy. That's what they call it. Yeah, the Burmy. The Burmy. <laughs> what a move. The rise and fall of <laughs> the Burmese. Um, the Burmese. So used, that used to be my, I think that was my A game until we went to, um, when we went to Brazil, Alliance yeah. in Brazil. We, I, we lived in Brazil for six months. I went to Alliance there and I was like, oh, everyone knows how to stop this. <laughs> um, but I, so I started working single X as well. And I think that sort of took over single X and X guard. And then you I went through a deep half stage. Remember no, no, that? No, no, never, no, <laughs> that no, no, years I, ago. no. I never yeah. played deep half as my A game. Okay. I probably was trying. I to feel like it. you just got insulted a little bit. But half guard itself. I, I, yeah. I actually probably get more sweeps from half guard than, than anywhere now in the gear. Yeah. Just cause I feel like it's actually quite neglected by a lot of you know, half guard. Often I go against someone who's like very good at the modern game. And I'll just play half guard with the underhook and they... I love half guard. Well, you, you go against like an old school guy yeah, who knows how to... Like who's gone through the days when that was the thing. And you're like, oh, this is hard. Yeah. But like the, the, so a lot of the newer guys, they haven't dealt with like a good half guard underhook. That's an well. interesting observation because I've noticed that exact same thing from playing so much lapel guard mm. to where people don't bother to try and learn lapel guard. They just see it as like it's too much. They don't want to like learn the d- intricacies... intricacies, intricacies I'll get it right eventually. The intricacies of the movement. And so they just sit down to their knees. And yeah. it's like we've gone full circle now. Because yeah. the reason people stood up is because it was so difficult to actually deal with half guard and close guard on your knees. Like, yeah. what can you even do, really, right? And so, like, my game is this weird mix of, like, hyper-modern, <laughs> flexible lapel entanglements. And then when they try and defend it, I've just been cultivating all butterfly guard and half mm. guard with underhooks. And it's yeah. incredibly easy to pull off these, like, old-school moves against the newer, like, yeah. purple belts and brown belts that I face because they just have no concept of it. They've been dealing with standing passers their whole life and... Once they drop to their knees to try and avoid the position, they're not really quite sure how to deal with the old yeah. style movements. It's actually a lot of fun. I've, I've been teaching a lot of like old school jujitsu now because of that, like yeah. focusing a lot on butterfly and half guard stuff and close guard. And it's kind of cool how things come full circle. It's also yeah. I think whenever, whenever whenever someone neglects something, it'll start working again. You know. Yeah. Like as yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, like guillotines. <laughs> no, uh, those have always worked though. I think they've always been neglected. Really. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think. Wasn't Ken Shamrock hitting guillotines in like UFC two? Yeah, <laughs> right. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but they're st- I'm pretty sure they've been almost thirty thing. years ago. Wow, well, he's doing the heel hooks too. So. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. he's true. Oh, yeah. Liv, what do you? What do you? What is? What do you do? I'm, I'm just kidding. I know that sounds really fucked up. At the I moment, could, I'm I could, tagging along. I couldn't. I couldn't get the word out. Uh, no, I want. First of all, I wanted to ask if you teach any classes at yeah. the academy. I do. You have a women's class. Uh, we have a women's class just once a week. Yeah. Um, I teach normal classes as well, like co-ed, whatever you call okay. them. Yeah. We do have a women's class. It was really, I think, needed at the start just to get more girls in the in the gym. Now we have probably at least 20 women every night from white to black and they, on the mat. So it's more like just like a it up. social, getting the girls in, like the, the It's a good way to get people to join. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, I never cared. I just started jiu-jitsu. But there's a lot of women out there who are very intimidated or of they course. might have gone through domestic or sexual abuse or Rightfully something. Rightfully so, because yeah. there's a lot of creepy men out there. Mm. A lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot. So, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we do we do that once a week, but um, I teach 
normal classes and I teach the kids as well, seminars. I tag along with Lockie a bit, but I'm also physio. So oh, you are? We have a clinic out of a gym. Um, so I've just been pretty much treating whoever breaks so at the gym. So do you nice. intentionally injure your students to <laughs> make sure that they <laughs> <laughs> It's a great business model. Uh, oh, but it, it keeps it more fun. Like it's much more fun trying to rehab a jiu-jitsu athlete and give them a drilling plan. And, when, you know, like I, I had a couple of patients who have come from other physios go like, I hurt my LCL in a mounted triangle and the physio was like, oh, do it on me, show me. And she's like, I don't want to sit on your face. <laughs> so <laughs> just having understanding of the sport really helps, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, but besides that, what else? I sit on the, um, what's the equivalent to the Sports Athletic Commission in my state. Seriously? So I officiate a lot of the um, like MMA shows, boxing and Muay Thai. Um, do so you mean that you're a judge or you're the No, uh, no, no. So I'm the, the board. Ring. Yeah. So not, not in the ring. I'm outside ah. of the ring. So pretty much like we uh, approve of matchups and judges judge the judges. The judges. Yeah. Got <laughs> there it. You go. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Good fun. Regulation. Mm. I like it. Um, what are some of the dates you guys have coming up for seminars and where are, where are they located? Uh, Do you have Phoenix, Phoenix tomorrow. So tomorrow? Oh, sold yeah. out already? <laughs> what time are you flying? Uh, in, the morning. Or in the morning? 10, 11. Yeah. Oh, and then you're going to do it in the afternoon? Yeah. It's a short yeah. flight. Because it's a Monday tomorrow, right? Yeah. Is it Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today is Sunday. Because this was only the second seminar, right? Mm. You did an LA one? Yeah. Or, and did then LA one? yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty busy schedule. So it's like one every day, pretty much. So then yeah. we're going Phoenix, then. Uh, Houston. Houston on New Year's Day, <laughs> oh my 5 gosh. p.m. on New Year's Day. So. That'll get a good big turnout, though. Yeah, yeah, it should be good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, holidays are great for that kind of stuff. People love to do jujitsu on their off days; like yeah. it's yeah. their main thing. It's how they yeah. they loosen up, have fun after New Year's. So where's the best sure place people? Rolling. Where's the best place people can sign up for th the seminars if that uh, they aren't all full? They can if you want to see the full schedule. It's on LachlanGiles.net. You can go to seminars and then you okay, and also your there. Instagram probably right. Yeah, Instagram, have it, yeah. I thought we agreed it was Giles. <laughs> That's Giles. what you said. G Giles. 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 Sounds like a J. Yeah. Giles. Sounds like a J, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my name to Giles. It's even worse now. If anyone has dealt with <laughs> confusion about their <laughs> name, Josh, it's you. You know how difficult it is with J's and yes, G's. I know J's and G's. J's and G's are hard they for get us. Confused for a lot. Reason. Yeah, I know. Gosh. But <laughs> still, it's still, <laughs> it's still better. <laughs> it's, it's still better than being called Keenus, which is like a totally artificial attack on me. <laughs> she should have stopped. As in, aren't as they all artificial? No, because your name is spelt like Hinge, and it should be. It just has an R Hinge? at the end. It's literally singer. What about the word singer or <laughs> finger? <laughs> it's actually they finger. Know, finger. You know the word finger. I'm not familiar with that one. Finger. No. Oh, speaking of guillotines and fingers, <laughs> hmm. if you're getting choked in the guillotine, and I do this to you all the time, you know, like you have to like make a... I've never been choked in a guillotine from you. Okay, no, but I mean when you're doing it to me is okay. what I'm saying. Gotcha. If you're about to get choked in a guillotine... Guillotine. Gilly. Why do you say guillotine? I, I mean guillotine. Because guillotine. Because it's a French word. I literally word. use both. I and say both French, all the time. And in French, the double L's is a yeah. In Spanish too. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Cali, point is like Cali, you know the street Calle. Yeah, it's yeah. Calle. If someone grabs a guillotine on me, gilly, I will grab their fingers call and pull it, it off. Call my it neck. a gilly. I'll grab your fingers. I want you to hear. I want to hear you say. It. I'm, I'm not going to answer your it. fucking question. I'm not going to say. I'm it. not going to answer. Your I'll question. tell. I'll ask Lachlan. <laughs> okay. No, you cannot pull the fingers. You can though, kind of. Kind of. Because no one's going to see, and it's like if you don't, <laughs> you might get choked. Are you okay. going to pull the fingers? Can I squeeze your fucking balls if I'm trying to get out of a triangle? Is that okay? That's probably not okay. <laughs> but it's like four <laughs> fingers or less is okay. There's no ball rule of like multiple Actually, balls or one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can only grab one. In the IBJJF, you're not allowed to as grab. As long as it's two, it's okay. <laughs> you can't even grab all four fingers in the IBJJF. What? No, yes, yeah, you, you can. can. No, I yes, you can. can. I can. You can definitely do this. I'm telling you right now. It's, you can do this. Win. That's all. That's literally written in the do rules. Do you want me to give you my example or no? Sure. Okay. I was mounted on someone. He had all four of my fingers. I literally just looked at the referee, and it was the one that like is super strict. The older guy, I forgot his name. I literally held it up like this. Muzio. You bastard. I, I looked at him. I look, I'm like this because he wouldn't let go. He was squeezing my fingers and he just had the fingers, but he had all four of them. That sounds like a the ref referee. Error. Slapped his hand, yeah, gave, him a, gave him a penalty, and we continued. What? So. I think you're allowed. Maybe to because that's him. your Josh, because you're Josh Hinga. I don't think that I get, <laughs> I don't think I get favoritism from the referees <laughs> at all. Maybe they're fans of the podcast. I'm pretty sure this was four years ago oh. <laughs> in the Chicago Open. 
I'm not sure. I just think it's, I think. I think it's illegal to grab fingers, but they overlook it sometimes when it's all four. Or if it, if it's close, like maybe you're kind of over the knuckles and kind of over the fingers. Okay, but there's scenarios that you run into in jiu-jitsu competition where, like say you're about to get your guard passed, and you know you're about to get your guard passed, and if you get your guard passed, you're probably going to lose. And you put your foot behind the guy's neck in his the collar, knee, yeah. his collar illegally, but it saves you from the guard pass, but you get a penalty. Is that illegal? Yeah. Yeah, but you'll get a penalty, but you won't get DQ. But you can put the foot on the collar in the front, yeah. like right here. You can't you can, put it in the back. You can't put the heel in the back of someone's Why? neck there because it's so effective at getting someone off you that they made it illegal. Because it's effective. Because it's so effective. Not that it's dangerous. No. Yeah, because you have to remember when these rules were made, passing was predominantly on his knees and like double unders and over under, and you could literally just kick someone off with putting your foot there. I used to do it all the time. As a Great purple. triangle setup. Really? Yeah, like double just, unders. Just creating those. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Away, and they tried the legs for through. sure, yeah. But they made it illegal probably because people didn't know how to pass standing. You don't really see as much double under passing as much anymore. But what I'm saying is like in that scenario, is it frowned upon to play the rule to take the penalty instead of the points? And same thing with the fingers. If you're about, if you pu put me in a guillotine and I know I'm going to get choked or at least have my neck fucked up for the next two weeks, I'm, I'm just going to pull your pinky and get your hand off and take the penalty. Yeah. Is that illegal yeah. or is that I just mean, like it strategy? Is illegal. You're going to get a penalty, but, but it's not a, that, that just because it's a penalty doesn't mean it's illegal. Mm. It's just penalized. It's different. Illegal is like getting DQ'd for walking out of the. If if I, you put me in a guillotine, I just casually lift you up and walk out of the the ring. Pretty sure if you get That's a penalty, it. it means something's illegal. I'm just but then, well, how come you can get four of them before you? <laughs> you can get four of them. Techniques that are you. illegal are penalized. I don't understand the confusion here. Okay, but not that it matters what word we're using. I understand what you're asking. Regardless, it's it's in the rules that you can get away with it. Are you asking me match. whether it's a good strategy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You're all, it also, it's a dick strategy is what it is. Is it, though? So next time I'm getting triangled, I'm going to stick my thumb <laughs> right in your butthole. <laughs> That's not even illegal, though, is it? So here's my question. Yeah, wrestlers <laughs> can check the oil, right? So we saw this clip of Bo uh, Nichols. Nickel or Nickel? I forgot. Nickel. Anyways, Nickel. when he was training uh, for that match with Gordon, he he grabbed this guy's butt like this and elevated him up. Like He, ho he hooked his tailbone with his fingers like this as checking oh the oil. God. Are you familiar with checking yeah, the oil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did anyone check your oil while you were wrestling in the wrestling tournament? It's very common. It's just a it's a great handle because it is because you because <laughs> you grab the coccyx. That's why he doesn't do leg day. You know what the coccyx is? I really yeah, think tailbone. wrestling the tailbone would be very popular if they just wore the rash guard. Yeah. Like no <laughs> yes, it'd be so popular. Yes. Hey, flow <laughs> wrestling. Take notes. Can you imagine like if even the Olympic? Because like, the Olympic, I actually think wrestling as a sport is more exciting than jiu-jitsu. Like Olympic wrestling as oh, like yeah. like the from like the, the scrambles they have. But I think a lot of people just look at the singlets and get turned off. Well, yeah, because they all, everyone has the little, the little, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you call this? What's a good word? The nub. <laughs> no. like it's cold in those stadiums, man. <laughs> and you're in the rash. And you're in the. It's like they're, they're smuggling grapes inside there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. I never thought yeah. of that could be the, the thing. It is the that thing. That just holds it, it back. I know it is. Uh, if yeah, they, it if be, they had a rash guard. at least three times more popular. Fuck yeah. At least. If they had board yeah. shorts and rash guards. We need to hire you onto the board of that regulation <laughs> to <laughs> get that <laughs> done. Yeah. What is the point of singlets? Just it's to, tradition, so probably. Yeah, that's a, that'd another that'd be, that's it. perfect yeah. example of tradition holding a sport back. Like, but you I, could make it like a shirtless. Yeah, like rash or something. shorts. Very good point. Just throw some shorts over the singlet, yeah. I agree. That's it. Easy. That's why it's so important to adapt to the changes. Of I remember when I was in high school and I had to put the singlet on and walk out in front of everyone and like on the. I did the that stadium. too, and it was embarrassing and for was me just, back yeah, then. I was just as like, like a thirteen-year-old. Right, you're like, super awkward. You're so awkward when you're a teenager, and here you got to like run out there and your junk's just like flopping around inside this, g in this <laughs> singlet. <laughs> find my photo. <laughs> oh, you got a singlet photo of? Yeah. Lucky. Nice. Lucky. Is that the one? Can you that see, I, can see you I bought one online and it was too small. <laughs> can you airdrop? <laughs> hey, can you airdrop that to me, Liv, right now? Uh, can, can we make it my it thumbnail of the podcast? No, I'll just go to your. <laughs> can you send that to me, Liv, right now? Seriously? Sure. I, I need to find it. The people need to see it. <laughs> People's champ. It'll take That's a while right. to find. I think. No, hey, no. Liv, you got any uh, embarrassing stories about Locky? <sighs> He's not too embarrassing. He's just messy. Messy. Tell us more about us, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to pay for this later. <laughs> it's all right. I never win anyway, so 
but um, like uh, he's giving you. you the death stare right now. This is like <laughs> he's like you're trying to communicate with her silently. Like, Shut your mouth, Liv. <laughs> no, like he's like this is a rubbish bin. <laughs> he's kicking her right now. Like on the right table. here, and he will put the rubbish on the ground instead of in the <laughs> in the rubbish bin. <laughs> that sounds intentional. <laughs> oh come on. If we get so annoyed if I left cupboards open, I'm leaving the. I'm like, okay, just close it. I'm I'm that guy too. Though. It's so annoying. Oh my god. Leaving cupboards open is that your pet peeve? It was, but you're not closing them, so you, you, you I got really annoyed got so much yeah, that it yeah. taught him lessons. So like, so it was literally to the point of like, I can't deal with this relationship. You're leaving oh the cupboards shit. open. I was like, it's true. So, right. so that comes down to like probably toothpaste caps. Probably leave off the probably, toothpaste. Yeah. No, All you don't sorts do of that. little things. But just just little things, yeah. Can I see this as well? Um so Lucky, were you ever there in the kitchen? Uh, like you look like you live in that thing. <laughs> yeah, it look, it's actually You're a very it's, it's not even an embarrassing yeah, photo that's at all. It's just a great yeah. singlet. Photo. Oh, no, that's not that's not the worst one. Though. Great, oh, I don't know great representation yeah. of a singlet. So we hey Lucky, were you ever holding the cupboard and just thinking to yourself, like, <laughs> do I want to have this fight right now? Like, should I or should I not? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, did you ever do it on purpose? Be honest. Cupboards. Come on. Say it to the mic. <laughs> I never did. It's not that. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Dude, he's got his mind on other things. Live. He's thinking about Sing- patellular <laughs> have, you, have, have you ever done something to intentionally piss off Lachlan? Probably. Like what? Like what pisses off Lachlan? Uh, at not home? much. I don't know. What annoys you? I've never. Se- I've never really get annoyed if you get annoyed at me. Yeah. Like I get annoyed that you're annoyed at me for something like that. For like That's not cleaning. Yeah. Something Mainly, like you do seem quite stoic. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to annoy him. You have to like dance and like poke him, and or like when we're <laughs> he rolling he and he's trying annoyed. to roll light, and I'm like cross face, then he gets annoyed, but not much. He looks annoyed. Then you right got now, annoyed with me once in a roll. That's it. I don't know why, but my I can't hear you through here. Where? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you like really, but not through here. We we'll oh. cut him off. No, we just gotta look and. Make sure this thing's plugged in. Yeah, it's making. Usually, fast. when the equipment starts to fail, it's a great time to just sort of wrap things up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, to be it. honest, Lachlan, you can take them off. Like you don't even need them as long as you keep your mouth close enough oh, and right. you, you know it's, it's working again now. Whatever you did there, okay. was, yeah. There we go. I'm trying to find this picture. I can don't know why I'm trying uh, to show you this picture. No, Lucky doesn't get too annoyed. Nah. He just nods a lot <laughs> and doesn't really talk. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we have fun a lot. Oh, you look so happy in this <laughs> picture. Oh my Is god. Is that the two small singlet? Yeah. That Is was like my size, wasn't it? Is there a video footage of your wrestling matches on oh. YouTube? Um, <laughs> so I've got it uh, myself. Um there's like one from a while ago, but I thought I had some impressive chest hair, but that <laughs> is <impressive. laughs> That is quite <laughs> impressive. You guys got to send me these so I can post them. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> um did you feel did you feel much of a difference wearing the wrestling shoes when you're wrestling versus wrestling without yeah, shoes? Yeah. Because I train without them, right? No, um, most of us do, yeah. And then when I shoot, when I put them on, I'm like, oh, I can actually shoot. You know, right. you have like um, force, and you can drive well. You can keep like yeah. going, mm. yeah. And you don't have that fear. You don't of hurt your toes, either. right? You're not going to crush your toes. You're not going to get the mat burn on the top of your foot, and yeah. you're not going to get guillo- guillotined. Right. So you know, Mind everything, you. everything, yeah. you're just like, oh, yeah, I this believe is, this is good. Yeah, gillied, gillied, gillied. <laughs> yeah, gillied. Gillo. You're not going to get gillied. Yeah, I did turn my ACL with the. Wrestling boots on, so hmm. That's too, too much friction. traction. Yeah. yeah, some people continue training with completely torn ACLs, like me. And you just you don't have an ACL right now, and it ha- it's not affecting you. Seriously, oh, it affects me a bit. So I tore it first time like three weeks, uh, like three years ago, probably three weeks before Copper Podio, and I actually competed and won without an ACL. But it was like usually when you tear an ACL in any other sport, it's a really high trauma. To the knee, so you like break everything else. With I did mine like trying to get out of a double leg really badly, so it just snapped in the middle, and I was f- really functional, so I was able to change my game and and sort of stay on the bottom and play spider guard and stay safe. And then I rehabbed it for like just I never skip rehab day ever <laughs> for the last probably three years, but it was actually this time last year before EBI, um, like on the ra- last wrestling session, I just. I was taking someone down and I just stepped wrong and the whole thing exploded. Um, and it took – so the sports physician, like, advised me not to go through surgery. Like, we're heading away from doing surgeries. Not for everybody, but you can rehab it without an ACL, basically. So it took me four months 
of like really good rehab and then I won ADCC trials. But I can't wrestle as well. I can, but it's a little bit loose. So I have to really change my game. And so is the ACL one of the ligaments that is targeted from a heel hook? Mm-hmm. And which uh, both no. It's usually a secondary. Yeah. It's possible to. What uh, is the primary injury? Usually MCL. medial me, MCL. Which one's on? Which one's on the inside? The MCL. 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 Yeah. Really? So that'll be damaged first, usually. U- usually, it's from possible to get an ACL from yeah. both versions <coughs> of the heel hooks, like inside and outside. Oh, uh, outside more LCL. Okay. So yeah. 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 But then there's a bit of rotation, so then you got meniscus and ACL. Can, you know, right. It, it's, uh, it gets a bit messy when you add mm. more of a torsional, like there's the bridge, which should be. The, the hips coming in, right. it's usually more MCL. Okay. Oh, there's, there's the secondary sort of sideways mm. pressure there. Yeah, Interesting. Got the, I never yeah. thought about that. I don't think I ever tried to put pressure that way. I only tried to twist their leg. I think it's oh, like there, that's, more. There you go. Yeah. That's uh, the maybe where the physio knowledge Yeah. Helps. Interesting. <laughs> I never thought about that at all. Um, but I know when I fought Vinny at Metamoris back in like 2014, he had me in a super tight inverted heel hook, and I didn't tap to it because I had never been tapped to a heel hook yeah. like – even in training, I was pretty good at escaping yeah. them. I was super confident. But he had it so tight and had it so secure, it felt like my knee actually rotated and then relocked. Oh, I've really? had the, but I've didn't had this. T- nothing tore. Really? Yeah. Is that possible? You didn't damage anything. I didn't damage anything in my knee. Right. In so fact, the next day, or my my ankle, something definitely yeah. ruptured in my ankle after that happened. Like after my, I felt my knee sort of. I relaxed my leg as it happened. I didn't try and like fight the heel, the heel hook because I just figured like I, to get out of this, I need to like be bendy. <laughs> but I definitely felt yeah. it rotate and then kind of relock, and then the ankle popped, but I didn't tap, and then I was he like let go, and then it kind of went back into place. And your knee was, no, was there was no damage to my knee whatsoever. One, is it the same one you've torn the knee that done the kneecap on? Yes, but that was uh, didn't previous. Feel like that though. No, it, there was no pain. It, it definitely felt very uncomfortable and painful at the moment, but it didn't damage mm-hmm. anything, and I've never had any issues since. In fact, it, I think it may have fixed a sort of locking thing <laughs> that was happening before when I was maybe mounted. You on a, maybe you had a meniscus, meniscus injury that yeah. got Put back in or sheared it off or something. Sheared it, maybe. Yeah. But ever since then, I've been able, I used to not be able to do mounted triangles without my knee locking. You're right. And yeah, then, and then after that happened, I could again. <laughs> there you go. You did surgery on yourself. What well on Vinny? Well, Vinny, <laughs> Vinny, yeah. It's highly yeah, effective chiropractic maneuver to fix my yeah. meniscal issue. <laughs> but I always thought that was totally bizarre. And ever yeah. since then, I tapped to heel hooks in competition. Yeah. Like Gordon, for instance. Like if so, if someone gets my ankle now, because I feel like I had one free, like yeah. get out of jail free card that instance, and I never yeah. want to risk it again. So I, I feel like that's true for a lot of people. I feel like you're willing to push the limits of your joints until you receive an injury, and then you realize your mortality. And right. It, yeah, and it's like six months or three months of right. off sport and something we like doing. And Right. I used to never tap to anything until it popped. Yeah. And then once I've had that experience, then I'm more likely to tap. Like, I used to never tap to the ankle locks until I had my foot, like, ripped off. And then same with my arm. Yeah. I've yeah, had my, my ankles popped quite a few times. From toe holds and um, straight ankles. All in training, though. I need to replug this in. And my knee, too, I think, actually. Yeah. I used to, like, just fight out of things until I received a, a, an injury, right? It's like kids. You yeah, know, kids, you they, know. they don't understand their mortality until they receive right. a, a horrible injury. And then all of a sudden, they're a little more fearful. I got a question about the belt system. If we're done talking about other stuff. Sure. Do you guys think we should add another belt to the system? Or do you think it's a good way it is? I think we should add another belt. I think I would like to. I think something like a um, the like to, to separate like a competition achievements from just belt would be interesting. Like a li- you know mm. divisions, kind of like you know division one, division yeah, yeah. two. You know, I think mm-hmm. that would be you know because it, it's very hard. Like so now, now there's enough black belts that you can go like, oh, they're a black belt, but it doesn't tell you there's necessarily m- so many levels. Like, yeah, there's there's a yeah. lot of levels. To, you know, like yeah. um, not. Th- I mean, obviously, every black belt has some skill in jiu-jitsu. And degrees are very misleading. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the moment, you could look at, you know, a, a just let's say in Melbourne, for example, you could look online and go like, oh, well, he's a, Lachlan's a black belt. Other guy's a black belt. Another guy's a black belt. Like, what's the difference? Right, you know? right um, of course. Um, so having some level of like, you know, um, to say like, oh, okay, and they competed at, at this level. This is what competition and, titles do. Yeah. That would be a so lot. Titles do that, but like... Um, yeah, because obviously, if you've won a world championship medal or something, that tells it. Obviously, you have to be at a very good level. Right. Um, but then, like, doesn't mean you're a like good instructor. No. Yeah, right. but I- even even then, I think there's a lot of people who are like very good, 
competitors that haven't quite got to that level, but it's still it's hard to tell. It's hard to differentiate them. Well, there's from some people who are good at one thing or like just a very narrow game as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just good trying point. to like let's say like um, Andres, if he won a he's done one Pan Ams or something, has he? Or I believe he. Sorry, he was a wor- world champion at all belts except black belt. Okay, I believe yep. he'll get there. Yeah, yeah, he's doing really well. He has, um, it, he has it in him for sure. Um, yeah, so it'd be good to s- even just s- for his black belt <coughs> to say, like, oh, well, he's he's clearly competing at a very good level to have something to kind of you know a division or something. You know, he'd be in division one if there was right if there was divisions. You know, right. yeah. so what would that look like? I think you could have like practice. E- I think he, uh, ideally you'd have each year. Like two or three people drop down a division, and two or three people go up a division. You mm-hmm. know, or four. I don't know how many. Like, let's say there's sixteen in the world championship. Do you think that uh, IBJS ranking system could be incorporated in that somehow? Because they do have that point system. Have you seen that? That's yeah. a hard one though. Yeah, but you I don't can like just that enter every open and yeah. and be ranked number one. It's that's true. And and <laughs> yeah, you get medals that. for. <laughs> that's no, what Sabin like, did. But you know, we yeah. have one open a year in Australia. It's really expensive right. to go anywhere, and usually at black belt for women anyway, there's pretty much no competitors. So you win open weight, right. And your own weight division without having a fight, it's and misleading. it ranks me top ten in nogi or something. Maybe right. there could be what some sort of ELO <laughs> system. Yellow. Based on, huh? Yellow system. E-L-O. E-L-O, oh. how they use in chess. <laughs> There's like I a, don't know what basically, that is. if you gain points or lose points based off of the level of your opponent. So if they're right. much higher level than you and you beat them, yeah. you gain more points. Right. And if they're super high level and they beat someone much lower, they barely gain any. And right. so it yeah. creates this sort of okay. point. I like feel s- like Flow does that uh, they do that or they, they they do a point do. system that looks like that but it's not right. actually and there's is actually entirely opinion based i think it's very subjective and then IBJJF, it looks like it as well but it's based off of a very structured gold medal count not it's versus a hard the one competitors too. i think i was ranked higher pound for pound than i was in my weight division <laughs> <laughs> right I mean, like, rightfully so but i, I mean. think i think there is there is an ac- a website that does track it it's just not upkeep very okay. odd, but it could be. But I think that would be a, a cool way to differentiate that. And then you what, get it embroidered on your belt or something every year <laughs> so people know. You got get a little tattooed. number. There you go. You cross <laughs> out the previous year <laughs> and update it. Is um totally unrelated. What is the culture like in Melbourne? Mel- like generally or? Melbourne. Do you, is there a lot of cross training or is it very uh, tribal and everyone kind of sticks to their corner? Or do you guys like... Do you guys all get along very well? Does like do people cross train much or? I, it's it's kind of it depends on the the club. We, we like we I've always uh, encouraged people to do that. Well, I've never told anyone you can't train anywhere else. Um, so and and anyone could come and train with us. I don't. Yeah, you know, we don't of, have whatever, like whatever a patches wearing, or a gear yeah, policy yeah. or anything. Uh, is there is there academy drama in but Melbourne? So, um, that you not, know not of. bad. No. no. Um, I think I mean, maybe some, some academies, but we don't really hear about it. Or yeah, there, there's care. definitely some <laughs> gyms that don't let their students train elsewhere. Um, some academies they can't be in photos and stuff. But I mean, whatever. We, they just don't go in the photos. Right, right, right. <laughs> like it's yeah. uh, we don't really hear much about it because it's probably to be honest, it's kind of <laughs> easier for like it's easy for it's, it's it's easier for me to say like oh I don't care because like we're, our gym's doing pretty well. Right. So it's like uh, I could. I can. I don't think it's right, and I don't think I would do that. But I can see why someone who is running academy that they be they might be worried about a larger academy taking their students. You're I can saying see why they get like you know you're very saying like uh, you know, try to control what the students can do. But I think that never ends well. You know? When you yeah, you said you you don't think it's right for instructors to try to do that to control. Yeah, I students. think so. Okay, just yeah. want to make sure. Well, I mean, you that's just my don't own. own yeah, yeah, you just. Oh. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify that so no one misinterprets what yeah. you said. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the end, people are paying for a service. They I have an analogy. It's like, uh, how ridiculous would it be if you went into Starbucks and they were like, right. nope, you, we saw you at Coffee Bean. You're not allowed yeah. to exactly. work. We don't want your money. Get yeah, out of here. Exactly. Yeah. Like, what? I think it, it started, what, maybe like eight years ago, uh, like when Locke and uh, Kit and all the sort of so Kit was from a belts. different. I was under like a Machado lineage and Kit was under Gabin and we started training together and yeah. a bunch of it. Uh, yeah. like, I, I mean, think I, they all I kind of went like... Uh, who cares about winning the pen perks if we know each other's games we have to be good in the world and Australia wasn't so they all started training together all the guys and then all the girls started training together and we all started improving like the whole of Australian level went up um, yeah yeah um, I, I, I think um, where where people get um, you know because I suppose like you know if, as a coach someone might you know you're, you're 
you're running a gym and you 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 expect it to you know you want you want to think that you're good at doing what you do and then to have someone go like oh actually this mm. place is better I'm I'm going there my I could see how someone would feel kind of um, you do invest like a lot of time be, yeah, it would, and it would, personal it would investment feel into like it would sting it would sting it would sting yeah. Yeah. yeah but I still don't think it's not the right thing to say. Right, you can't train. I think it's just like you got to. Okay, well, when if you that tell happens, then I've got to get better at what I do. You know, yeah, like, you have yeah. to just take ownership of the yeah. situation. You, I think, yeah. If you tell someone they can't do something, they're gonna want to do well, it. Exactly. Yeah. That's just human nature. I think when we train with Fabio Gugel in in Brazil, like he said something that really stuck with me, and I think he said even if you take a kid off the street and you give them the life and you sponsor them, you still don't own them. You know, they're right. still allowed to go wherever they want to because you don't do it because right. you want to keep them forever. You do right. it because you want <coughs> to. So it's kind of yeah. Well, yeah. Giving giving gifts to people doesn't give you any right to control no. them, period. Yeah. Um and I think in the end, like some people are not gonna like everything about your academy or they might personally not like your coaching or style or not get along with another member or something and that happens. Yeah, <laughs> for sure it happens. I think Overall it's, it's pretty good in Australia though, I think. Yeah. 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 I think actually the bigger the like the more gyms that open, the less politics. Occurs, I think, from, yeah. my, from my experience, like you go to like a town where there's two gyms. That's true. That's true. Yeah, they all hate each other. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Like, that would happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, where once when there's fifty gyms, they're like, ah, oh, I can't. All I can do is control what's in front of me. Right. Not like as in like, um, yeah, you know, just try and build a good club and not worry about anyone else. That's a really good point, actually. Yeah, I never really thought of that. The more gyms, the better. The more gyms there are, the less likely there is to be rivalry. I mean, I'm sure there's there's a rivalry if people have personal history with each other, right? Like, yeah. if, if you grew up with someone and then you guys had a falling out or something, you guys were business partners that went bad. Of it course. also makes you wonder if maybe more gyms is good for all gyms because everyone is marketing to the base of people that doesn't know jujitsu and can reach a broader audience to get people into jujitsu and get everyone more clients. Well, San Diego is a good example, right? Yeah. Because it's saturated. Yeah, you would, I mean, what is saturated though compared to like what other co- business? Like it's not. Yeah, is, no. Is we it saturated? We can't compare it to Starbucks, but compared to other s- compared to other cities and, and very high quality yes. gyms. It's not just like any old gym. There's a lot of gyms here that you've never heard of, too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Right. We have no idea how many gyms are in San Diego. I think really? it's, it's a lot. There's th- three on this street, and I'd only really? s- I'd only ever right. seen the Alliance one, but there's one called yeah. Primal as well, which I ha- wasn't aware of, and it's wow. down the road as yeah. well. There's one. There's one down the street that just has no affiliation with anyone. But it I've just always has some uh, random d- name, and I've never heard of them. And like they don't compete. There's got to be a reason that all the car dealerships are on the same street. Oh, there's a whole economic theory behind. Do you this. think that applies to jujitsu? That's why all all wedding uh, shops are on the same street too. Is because it just it naturally brings everyone into this area, and if they want a wedding dress, you're going to go to the same street, and so you ha- you kind of have to. Yeah, it, it brings set up your everyone, shop there. It makes sense. Well, if you don't. You're the, if you're the one person on the other side of town and there's four shops over here, where's everyone going to go? I feel like it's different for Jiu Jitsu though, because yeah. it's not like it's not like you go and <laughs> it's not like you'll go and do a class there and then you finish that class and you go, I'll just go next door and do another class and yeah, then go next like right. a, as in like trying uh, out. It makes gym. sense for Shopping the car around. because you can literally mm-hmm. within the one you know, hour time you can check out all the cars. Whereas it's, it's always going to be a separate trip to a, to a gym. Right. You're like not going to visit yeah. multiple gyms on the same day. Yeah. doesn't make sense. However, so. with like open mats and drop-in classes, you can still ha- be at one gym and then experience okay. the other gyms. True. And a lot of people like to do that. There's a lot of jiu-jitsu tourism in San Diego especially. I like Since I've opened, I've probably had more visitors than I have actual you know, yeah. customers who are signed up on some sort of like agreement or anything like that. Or at least equal, you know? And uh, I know at Autos it was the same way. Like a lot of times it felt like I was in a zoo or something. <laughs> like I'd just be there to try and train. And there's so many visitors coming in, trying, yeah. like taking pictures with the athletes. Yeah. Like yeah. just in a normal class. And it's like, I'm kind of just here to train, like not really like do like a whole like dance entertainment thing for you. <laughs> I just want to train kind of. Yeah. Can, can I ask you the, the question you started with me, like the class structure? How, mm-hmm. how are you looking at? doing that well in in this period of time i'm trying to be incredibly fluid with it and just try a lot of different things and see what is working most effectively and i think the testing stage for that might be a very long time to actually see results currently i'm trying to build like a crop of guys who want to compete and like Mm. want to get better because you kind of have two obligations as a gym owner it's like you have your obligation to the hobbyists and like you want to make sure that they have a fundamental knowledge of jiu-jitsu and then you have your obligation or it's, it's a personal obligation for me. Like I want to have a competition team yep. and I would treat the two 
differently, but it's very difficult to split them. Like, like you're saying, yeah. like you, you kind of have to s like segregate it a little bit, but then you have to like have them all be together at the same time. Um, I've been just focused. I think that one thing that every gym can improve on is just do more jujitsu from the time the class starts. Like, I don't see the point of doing Wait run, a second. running jogs. Wait a second. What are you saying that running around the mat in circles is not effective? Jiu -jitsu I, I'm saying training? you can definitely do more jujitsu <laughs> if you don't do that. Right? Yeah. We Are you saying <laughs> jogging around the mats in a circle in the beginning is bullshit? <laughs> yeah, and even to the point of shrimping as a black belt, like should you still really be shrimping up as a warm up? So I start all my class. Well, not all of them, but most of the classes, I either start directly into technique <coughs> or I start with a free drilling time where people practice their movements. And I wait. Are you saying drilling is an effective warm up? Can I finish? Let me just finish my <laughs> wait train of thought. Am I interrupting you for <laughs> once? <laughs> I I I like to let people do their own thing in the beginning sometimes, and then. Like I was saying earlier, I kind of assess what needs to be done, especially because I had so many people coming from other gyms yeah. here. I had a, a lot of different styles, and I saw a lot of people doing techniques that I would never really even teach. I feel like they're just largely ineffective and, like, outdated. And just it was clear that it was just a regurgitation of, like, a, a something multiple – lineages have learned and passed yep. down it's like that's not really effective like like i for, for instance the lasso tilt sweep it's just very difficult for a lot of people to pull off and with a, just a little bit of understanding of the position and weight yep. distribution it's almost ineffective entirely and so i like i've been trying to identify where people can improve and then try and base a, a generalized class around that so that everyone gets something out of it. So I still don't have like a established competition team, but I'm working towards it now to, I have about like at least five guys who are like pretty tough training and like, I want to try and um, help them in competition and like train for stuff and go to a, a bunch of different events. Um, but I'm kind of following the same sort of weekly focus thing. But the only thing I do differently is I try and like mix two things together in the week so it transitions like smoothly so i'll yep. start with closed guard uh, and then okay. towards the end of the week go yep. into like like i was saying like arm bars from closed guard and then the next week go into like all the routes of arm bar and then yep. transition from the arm bar to like maybe arm bar from the back or like if the arm bar fails the triangle then we go into the triangle week and i feel like that creates like a very fluid thing where anyone can jump in mm. like in the jet stream and not have to start at the beginning um and then also have that on my website as well to where if someone misses a day, they can go back by date and see what they missed, which I'm not sure how many people will actually do that, but I want to be able to offer it because mainly I'm I don't want people to just miss anything that's like crucial, you know, and even if they don't use everything, at least have them exposed to all the techniques. So if they ever get put in it, they at least recognize what it is, which I think is a valuable asset. Like I don't, I don't focus on everyone getting the move every single day. It's like, it doesn't matter if you mastered it or not. Yep. Like most people have a very, like you said, a very linear game. That's just very spe specified. But you have to be aware of everything, at least. You have to have, have the knowledge of what exists out there to be able to be a, a competent yeah. grappler. That's something I'm struggling with now in terms of... I'm, I'm trying to uh, <coughs> mess around a bit with how we, we run the, the, the structure of, of the, mm -hmm. the techniques. Um, and I'm, I'm still not sure what the right answer is, but would you rather, mm. would you rather take someone who's new and get them being effective quickly mm -hmm. or would you rather take someone like because i think like you could teach like a very narrow game a very narrow game to them <laughs> um, uh, if you teach them a very narrow game i think they can be actually right. effective a lot faster Let, mm -hmm. let's say for example the you teach them how, how to how to escape you know all the major you know, side control back or whatever just so they can get out of stuff get to half guard underhook and sweep right. to get on top you know, and a then, and basic then, and then, system. So yeah, they've got a system yeah. from bottom. Uh, now they work a system from on top to get, you know, to pass one one guard pass that they get good at, and then they take you know, a back take or whatever. So like they've got like one kind of almost linear with a few little uh, deviations within there, but it kind of keeps it on this linear path, and they're effective pretty quick. Or do you want to teach them, you know, like there's all different guards, different types of sweeps. Do you want to give them? A broad thing, but it'd be a probably gonna, longer term because they're not going to be good at good anything. at anything. Yeah, <laughs> you know? like sweeps because to be honest, so right now our fundamentals is mm -hmm. quite broad, mm -hmm. and we, you know, like I'll teach Expose like all the types to, of yeah. guard and so on, and I feel like that's really good. But I also sometimes look at someone roll, and I'm like, what are you trying to do? You know, like what's your game? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not teaching them a, a full game. game. Like yeah. I'm not taking them and going like, you need to be good at one thing and actually like 
doing enough of, of that. So I'm trying to find a way to to get people specialized. And I, but I don't know if and I also think for like for a, a big issue as well is a lot of people will quit if they don't feel like they're good at it mm-hmm. as well. You know, like they're doing it for six months. So like I'm learning all these each week. I learn a different uh, guard or you know technique, but I can't do any of it. Whereas I almost feel like if you get them effective early and then go, okay, yeah, you've got like a game. Now let's expand on that with, um, uh, that's, what, that's what I'm kind of thinking at the moment. What, what I've been doing um, right now is really focusing on whatever technique that I show. We do varying degrees of resistance during the drilling session. So rather than just like drill it, go back to yep. the wall, like the thing, drill it again, go back to the thing, do the next technique, drill it. Like each, each time that we drill it, we add like 50% resistance after no resistance. So you go into 50%, 70%, yep. 100%. I try to do that. Sometimes. Some, I don't do it yeah. all the time. Yeah. But then if I don't do that, I make sure that we do like a guard passing game scenario around the position. So yep. at least they get, they get some sort of realism there. Yep. So, and you can kind of see, they'll, they'll at least know what it's like, yep. you know? And then if pe- they're having issues getting stuck in it and the other people, are, like the cool thing about that drill is the people who are good at it stay in, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the people who are bad at it learn how to defend it better. Yeah. Right. And so you can kind of cover both ends of the spectrum with that kind of drill where it's like if they're not good at it, they can at least be good at defending it with when you teach the counter the next day or the next yeah. technique. That, and I think that can kind of help with the overall understanding and like make that overall, that broad understanding more effective with at least yeah. defense, right? Yeah, the, the hard parts for like the, I think for the, the person who's not a natural, like a week on that topic will not be, you know, it's, it's almost like they right. would need like three months <laughs> working their one mm. guard mm-hmm. to actually be uh, effective from it. Um, yeah, that, that's the hard bit. I, I don't know what the, I still don't know if I've got a right answer. for. I don't think there is a right answer. I think if yeah. someone's just bad at something and anything, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can't it's like, gonna take a long time. it's just yeah, going to yeah. take a long yeah. time and it's up to them if they want to keep doing it. I don't yeah. think you should focus your class around making sure that they, they have some sort of artificial success to make them feel good about it. I don't think it's, it's supposed to be hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose like it's more, it's more like, because uh, we're thinking of like possibly putting in like a six month um uh, like we've got like an intro and then mm-hmm. something for like their first six months, basically to get their first stripe. Yeah. Like, um, where they'll kind of like, you know, just get a solid, like, you know, I, I can tell you what I have planned for, on. for yeah. January. I'm planning to try and get as many fresh white belts as possible through like some sort of marketing campaign. And I have like something kind of set up right now and I'm going to construct like an eight week course mm-hmm. for absolute beginners and they're all going to go through it together from start yeah. to finish so you register for the course you're not a member of the gym yeah. by any means it's a one-time course they sign up for and they they pay for but you put them through eight weeks with the same people and you tell them that like you've got like everyone's going to be progressing at the same rate because you'll all be exposed to the same amount of information so you're all going to go through this together you don't have to worry about like getting beat up really and it's like very monitored action if they do spar even like very monitored situational sparring where they don't even have the option to really fail it's just participate like you if you participate you will improve and then at the end of that i think they'll have some sort of like feeling of like ownership over the jujitsu as well as like the power that they felt as they improved slightly in yeah. that scenario. So I think that the skill disparity is what gives that sense of like, I'm not yeah, successful yeah, in it. Yeah. Cause if everyone is like starting at the same time, of course the athletic guy is going to yeah. kick everyone's asses, but you can kind of like control that situation and make sure he goes like, you can kick him up to the advanced mm-hmm. class much faster and get him out of the situation. So he's not just dominating everyone. Yeah. It's, you know? yeah we've been having trouble with that from the intro class. Some, mainly guys like to feel like the best in the class mm-hmm. of the intro and it's really hard to check them out to go to the fundamentals. Right. Um, and that's why we're thinking of putting that middle class in. But it's also people do like a few, when they all just roll with each other, they never get to feel like what it's like to not just do like this and hold someone really yeah. tight yeah, so and what jiu should feel like. And I find that especially for smaller guys and women, they just get like, dominate and they don't know what it's like to just do nice jiu-jitsu where you're like oh there was no effort and i got swept or passed or mm. that's yeah, one point. thing one problem we have with the intro class is because like in our general classes we've got a good mix of uh, men and women but in the intro it might be like 10 guys and and one girl and she's they don't know how class, to go she's, light, not, yeah. she's not able to like join mm. in with the, the other girls in the in the regular class it yeah. is it is very beneficial for someone to train with a higher belt and mm. feel like what jujitsu should feel yeah. like. I think if you have enough instructors on the mat, yeah, you, can, yeah. you can have them True. roll, yeah. which is we, what was my plan. We did yeah. go through a stage of like for because we have sometimes we will have so many people on the mat for our fundamentals, and 
most of them are colored belt. So you paired up every white belt with a colored belt and like to get the colored belts off the mat and they all stayed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was actually really nice because they're teaching and the white belts kind of feel like what it should be like as well. That worked well. Another thing that works well for beginners is you always start your sequences like a 10-week plan from the back, so uh, from the end. So like say we're doing a sequence where it's whatever, double leg to side control to mount to turning the back and finishing from the back. So we'll start from the back so they know. You teach it backwards. Yeah, so they kind of go, oh, I want to get to the back and that's because when I get to the back, I know how to do rear naked choke. Right. So Because sometimes you go, oh, like why would I want to get to mount yep. if I can't finish or why right. would I yeah this is how I teach my seminars yeah I teach them completely backwards yeah I start with the finishing technique and then I move backwards into the what ifs and then yeah. I move backwards into the setups and then I work all the way back into the guard and the last technique I show is from the guard that's yeah. how to pass yeah what we did today. I did today yeah and that way they know yeah. where they're going it's like yeah. I always tell people you don't leave your house without knowing your destination right yeah. and it's just like in jiu-jitsu you don't start a sequence without knowing where you want to end yeah, up yeah. I kind of do it the opposite then I, I focus on control points. Like right. what what is the grip or the hook or the thing that like gives you control of your opponent and yeah. why does that give you control and what can it give you next? Yeah. And then it's like you, you show okay. how, how establishing the control point, whether it's the first grip or like, you know, a collar tie or whatever your technique you're doing and then show how it can transition mm -hmm. to a more dominant control and a more dominant control and then branch off to the actual submissions themselves. But I haven't thought about teaching things mm. backwards, really. Just like add, yeah, I think for fundamentals. I don't think for intermediate or anything that's necessary. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it, I found it. When I've done it, I've found it good. But yeah. um, I don't always do it. Yeah, I teach as if I'm teaching to experts, hmm. even though there are white belts. But I just... I, teach. I definitely cater to the more experienced people when I do seminars. Right. But I think in a class scenario... I think a, just a lot of one-on-one -on -one time fixing technique and the drilling time is really, really valuable. Yeah. And you can really, at that point, change your teaching style to what works for the individual. Because yeah. trying to teach to a large group in one specific mm -hmm. way is never going to work because yeah. everyone learns differently and it does get hard when we go, I, I don't know, like we get like 70 in a class a lot right. of nights. And it's we like, need assistance. I th yeah. yeah, I think, a lot I mean, well, yeah, I think upping the am amount of instructors who know what's yeah. going on to actually yeah. give individual help and correct mm -hmm. form is huge. Yeah. Because I'll teach a move, and it's like no one will have any questions for me in the move. Yeah. But then when we go to the actual drilling portion, th th people no, are doing it wrong, or that th now they have questions. And it's yeah. like we could have done this so everyone could have experienced it. So what I've started doing is like recording the actual one-on-one uh, -on -one time to also include into the technique portions for cool. people who go back to watch the video. If yeah. they are having issues, they can see yeah. that other people are having issues as well. You've been getting your dummy to try to do it. That works Yeah, well that works well. well. Sometimes I'll show a technique, and then I'll either get – who I was doing it with, or someone from the room. I I, I, oh, I pick the right person, go right. come come and do Who's it. Not and not going to like feel put on the yeah, spot about that's it. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah, if um, they can't do it, chances are your white belt is not going to be able to. You know. Yeah, yeah. I like if you miss, I usually don't pick someone who is can't do suck it. at it, but like someone who's. I, I know if someone I know who like it might be a blue belt or something, but I know that it's not necessarily their game, so they they're not going to like. Ace great it. at it, and we can kind of see if they. Yeah. And it's, it's sometimes it's like as simple as what's obvious to me or you is not obvious to the beginner. I think as a, you know? To be honest, I think a lot of it as well is just getting, you put yourself in that person's shoe. Like if you're watching and you're yeah. like, and I go, okay, now you know, Liv, you go up and do it. And you're like, oh, like what would I do if I was Liv? Yeah. yeah. As opposed to watching the coach to show it. It's like, oh, okay. Now they, the student has to do it. Yeah. I think also if, if you notice a lot of gyms, Try and teach like what they do, right? Like the instructor teaches his game and not just like the overall spectrum of jujitsu. But regardless of if they teach everything or they just teach a specific game, people still develop their own styles and do yeah. study on their own and figure like they, everyone develops their own yeah. game that is very unique to them with maybe, you know, similarities to certain things. And so I've always liked more of it like a sandbox environment, like where it's like you just put as much sparring time as possible just put as much mat time as possible and give them some basic directives and kind of let them see what works for them yeah. and like offer like tips and advice along the way and give them like a big library. Like that's kind of what my whole thing is to try and have a massive library of stuff that's like very organized and like put into a place where if they have a curiosity about a position, they can go find it or directly ask us during the free drilling time in the beginning of class. Like I said, I'll have the black belts. I'll say the black belts, if you don't want to drill, you can walk around and kind of help people with stuff if they have questions or like fixed technique and try to just be on the mat as experienced people 
as resources. And that's how been how long helping. are your classes? Um, usually what I'll do is I'll start the class. It'll have an hour and a half runtime. But if people, if I see that people aren't tired at the end of the class, I'll just keep the rounds going until everyone's done. So I, okay. sometimes I skip closeouts or if we do have a closeout where we all bow out and stuff, I'll just like jump right back on the mat and keep rolling with people or let them all continue rolling. So everyone, if people want to cut out early, they can, if people want to stay late, they can. What's a good percentage of sparring time you think <coughs> for a class? I, I personally feel the majority of time time in a class should be sparring or some sort of resistance. More than fifty. Yeah. What do you guys got? I think it probably depends on the level of the Tr- people. First, that, yeah. True. Yeah, you're right. For That's like the, beginner, the, much less. How <laughs> yeah. about the weekday evening class, which is mixed with all sorts of color belts and everything? I mean, we do for that. We usually have. <clears throat> about I like fifty percent. Yeah, about fifty percent. Yeah, yeah but, uh, but our sparring will be like about yeah. Uh, so half it'll be thirty percent will be like specific training, and then it'll be rolling. Got it. So whatever we've been working on, we'll got it. We'll train it with resistance. So if like an hour and a half class, you got forty five minutes of techniques and drilling, and then forty five minutes of training. But some of yeah. that is situational. Some yeah. of that is like stand up and shake yeah. hands and go. Yeah, got it. I've always felt that if you just had an only sparring class like Cicero Costa style where it's like no technique is really shown. You just come and you just fight every single day and you get that instruction like in the rounds with people who are better than you or like after the fact or on your own study. If you pick a group of like you take two crops of people like group A and group B and one group A only spars and gets their instruction through like osmosis, basically just absorbing it from experience. And then you have the other group who does like instruction and then sparring. I'm fairly certain if you put the two together for a sparring session, the guys who spar all the time are just going to wipe the floor with everyone who had the 50% of instruction. (laughs) I I haven't tested it, but it just like from my experience of training in both environments, because Lloyd Irvin's was like that as well. And it's a situation where cream kind of rises to the top. Like people who have the natural aptitude Mm. get better much faster in that open sparring environment. And then the other is like helps people who are a little like not as, yeah apt apt to learning so yeah i think it's very dependent on how like uh dedicated the people are like so if if it's just sparring then you're expecting that you know you're expecting that the person who's not doing well is finishing finishing the session (laughs) Um, finishing the session and you know going like okay what do i need to fix you know Right. How do I fix this and that? And then like putting in the work outside of that to But you can also you, you could provide some sort of like mindset to think about as they're doing the sparring session. Like yep. make sure that people understand that to improve during just sp- winning. Yeah. yeah, it's not just about winning, but it's about trying new things and like yep. being okay with losing and being okay with experimenting with new positions that you saw and which is kind of what I try and do with people already because I don't think it comes naturally to people. I think that mm. most people's intention is to win the round. Um but I try and tell people like just try the new thing. Like it's, you just tap and you restart. Like what is, did you really lose or did you yeah. have a chance to improve? Um, but I, I have to cl- kind of end this podcast. Cause I have a, <laughs> what? a dinner uh, with my family cause they're in town. So I got to head out pretty soon. What? Yeah. That's so many more questions for Lachlan. I can just dip out and you guys can continue. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't. <laughs> Actually, I did want to ask though, if you've had any trouble with the law in your past, be honest. Yeah. Cause I asked Craig the same thing no. and I asked Kit. No, nothing. Yeah. Live you. No. no, we're really boring. Strong armed robbery, nothing. <laughs> Keenan had a great story, but we don't gotta go. I, I shoplifted. Yeah, it's, on, a, <laughs> it's, on, it's on. It's on episode ten. Guys, go I check. I was it. arrested. Oh, it was really? wiped from my record for doing for doing juvenile community service. Wow. They wiped it from my record. But then years later, when the the Lord Irvin Fighter House was um, raided by the SWAT team. They what still had my record, and the detectives were. Like never, it never out. really goes. It never away. actually went away. Yeah, oh it never God. really goes away. But I didn't. I, I, that was the only illegal thing I did. I was just involved in the, a raid at one point, as wow. a, a victim, I would say. Well, if we're gonna close this up, <clears throat> um, I want to give Lachlan the opportunity to speak to the people, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the spot. Yep. No, I'm just saying it's the end of the year. You know, if you have any advice for the the listeners in terms of competition or just jiu-jitsu training in general or just um, just, all right. just, just yeah just you know just <laughs> give advice them, just um, give them a tidbit of information to help them in the new year help them in the new year um i just think enjoy it uh, enjoy it and think about what you're doing when you're training think problem solve yeah uh, that's the best way to that's a good go one, about yeah. it i yeah. like that be cognizant mm-hmm. of what you're doing yeah i think don't hit uh, that don't hit the random gator roll whenever you want just because you don't right. know what to do I mean, I think um, 
as, as a general thing for learning in jiu-jitsu because I've, I've been trying to study a lot on like how people learn and skill acquisition research and so on and um i think one of the biggest things is you need to know what went wrong and then you need like first you need to identify the problem like where is it going wrong for you and then what the solution is um and i feel like most of the time the reason people don't improve is they don't even recognize where they're going wrong so you go like how, how did you get your guard passed uh, i don't know um, like you need to understand, you need to be paying attention to that or recording it or, or whatever. I, I put it like I put it this way: imagine you're imagine you're trying to get good at basketball, and so you shoot at the at the ring, and you don't like all you don't actually get to see like you you don't get to see where the where the ball went. Yeah, all, yeah. all you hear is you missed. Oh yeah. So like, how do you fix that? Like right. you didn't get okay. it, but you have no direction of whether you put it too much to the left, right, too much right. to the right, and what you then need to do to correct it. So you need to know, okay, it was it, this was what went wrong. It went too much to the left. Now, I, and I need to correct it by, by going to more. This is just life right. advice. That's good yeah. life advice, guys. Just identify the problems in your life. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and take responsibility for them. Own it. Extreme ownership. Mm. And fix it. It's the end of the year, guys. I'm sure you all fucked up a lot of things out there. I know you did. I did too. I fucked up a lot of things this year. Definitely Keenan fucked up a lot of things too. I feel just fine actually. <laughs> like good well, year. you have to acknowledge it, Keenan. <coughs> yeah. Own it. Well, everyone does Own things it. wrong. But um fix A, identify those problems. Okay. And then fix them and go forward next year and do better. Guys. If I if I had a problem with which I well, I guess I do. A problem with 50/50 heel hooks, <laughs> I would go and purchase Lackland's instructionals which where can they get the the listeners get those if they're so inclined uh that's through bjj fanatics you can okay. check the link on lachlanjiles.net and then if you use those links i get a little extra cut as well so go go Ooh. to yeah. lachlanjiles.net and pick up a instructional because um lachlan is incredibly intuitive and educated when it comes to jiu-jitsu and learning as you saw here on the podcast today um thank you all for coming and attending You're in here a rush to team. go, huh? I have to go. <laughs> I, had so much, I had so much great shit to say. Yeah. We're actually up to two hours and 15 minutes. Yeah. So that's wow. kind of our limit anyways. Awesome. But thank you guys for coming out. Thanks and so I much for having us. I hope you guys. have a great rest of your seminar trip. Yeah, you guys enjoy your trip. And to the listeners, have a happy fucking new year. And, you know, just try to do better next year. Yeah. Not that, that not that you did bad this year, but we can all do better. Always. Always. And on all that right. note... I'm going to close the laptop. <laughs> You're going to press stop? Yeah, I probably should. All right, later, guys. Hey, hey check guys. out BJJ Link. Yep, they're the best. BJJLink.com. Bye-bye. <laughs>